I sure appreciate it. Everybody else there? Okay, so we're going to start with the audit committee yep. first. And then we'll make our way over to the regular meeting. Okay. So I am going to turn on the recorder. It's actually me and turn on. We are going to start with the audit committee meeting agenda. So okay. the recorder is now turned on. The time is now 9.42 a.m. I'm going to call the audit committee meeting of the Venetian Community Development District to order. Today is Monday, March 13th, 2023. The first item on the agenda is the call to order slash roll call. Those committee members that are present are Rich Brocco, Ernest Booker, present. Ken Smaha, Joe Pizarre, and Cheryl Harmon Tarana. On behalf of district management is myself, Linda Blandin. District Council Andy Owen is not with us, but we do have District Council Regina Kardash with us. District Engineer Rick Schaffiger is present. We do have Field Manager Keith Livermore present, as well as Julie Cortina from Vesta, and Heather Alexander is present as well. And for the record, there are audience members present. Before we move forward with our agenda, we ask that everybody please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please remove your hat. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> we do have audience comments uh, for the audit committee meeting. Um, I did not put out a sign-in sheet for audience comments for the audit committee meeting, but if there's anybody who has comments for audit committee purposes at this time, we ask that you please raise your hand. Thank you. The record shall indicate that the district manager did open up for audience comments and moving forward. We now have the presentation of the audit proposal instructions with eva and evaluation criteria with pricing and without pricing. These items are under tab number one and two. This is business item number three. The proposals would be due April 14th, and we would recommend that your next audit committee meeting take place April 24th, prior to the onset of your next regular meeting. Okay. Are there questions regarding the evaluation criteria? Are there any recommended changes? Go ahead. Um, I'd like to see more points added to the to number six price reasonableness. Um, rather than just five points, I'd like I, I would suggest changing that to ten and maybe lowering number three to fifteen because two and three kind of go a little hand in hand here. Because I think yeah. you know it, it's it's sort of like looking at the landscape proposals. I mean they're they're all over the place. Not that audit would necessarily be, but. I, I think there's a general understanding of how well do they understand what we're looking for and therefore price reasonableness allows you to factor that in a little bit more. So your total points would be? So would you do 10 I, for I would raise the same. Right. I would raise number six to 10 points and lower number three to 15. Let's go for four. So on. And the number of points you made the same. Yes. Just right. Reallocation. Reallocating them. Right. Yeah. About that. Well, is it necessary to have both those two and three? We can't combine them. You can work the same language into one criteria unless council has any objections. But I think experience and scope of work are two different. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with Ken. Scope of work is kind of, if you don't understand scope of work and you're an audit firm, it's kind of 
So maybe even take mm -hmm. take that one out and reallocate those points. Yeah, that's my point. Oh, I don't have a problem with it. Because it's, a, it's two some. Yeah. Where would you like to reallocate the points if you want to eliminate the criteria? Scope of work is the one you want to eliminate. Understanding the scope of work. Understanding. So that's the already section. been um, reduced to fifteen. To fifteen. Right. Could we take it to ten and give price reasonableness even more points? You can. Get <coughs> the rest of it there. I would say that because if if these firms are all good audit companies, there's not going to be a lot of variation in those. It's all going to come down to do you understand what you're bidding on, and yeah. and is it reasonable? So I would put more points there. I had actually thought about just combining. That's, that's what I said. <laughs> okay, so what do you what do you want to do then? Let's combine, like Ken said and I said. Well, but that's too but many. You, that's I would reallocate points, the points, though. It's too many. Too much. Okay. Uh, um, that's the yeah, only 20, reason 40. I would leave them separate, so you have a few points on scope. Okay. But they're not. Yeah, only because there's. Oh. Okay. If you allocated the fifteen mm -hmm. to. One, two, and four. Then essentially everything has twenty-five points because between price and price right. reasonableness, you're at twenty-five. Right. Right. But I just thought price ultimately should have more of a weighting because again, I think if these are all uh, solid accounting firms, you know, they're all going to be rated about the same. Same. Yeah. So that's going to come down to price. That's why I thought price should have more. I waiting. agree. And I think price reasonableness. Yeah, I agree. Any other suggested changes? So, well, where are we? we agree. Then? Yeah, let's, can we start at the top again and just go down? Sure. From uh, just number one, keeping it at 20 points. Mm -hmm. Okay. And number, number two? 20 points. Okay. Number three, 10 points. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number four, 20 points. Okay. Number five, 15 points. Right. Well, I'd raise that. I'd raise that to 20 then. And keep uh, price reasonableness at 10. Yeah. No. You've got five. You took you took a you took number three from 20 to 10. Right. So you have two fives to allocate. Right. right. Or you could put it all under reasonableness. And just make that 15 along with the price being 15. It, it doesn't matter one way or the other. I mean, I would like to see a little more weight combine. on price and reasonable as a price. Okay. You so if we did 20 and 10, and six. we can buy five and six together. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So what are the total points? No, I'm, I'm getting confused. No, That's no we, we weren't suggesting combining five and six. Right. Leave them separate. But okay. So you want 20 on price and 10 on price reasonableness? Yes. Okay. Does that give us 100? Yes. yes. Okay. You go 20, 20, 10, 20, 20, 10. Fine. Mm -hmm. it, it's even in harmony. 50, 50. It's not in harmony. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Okay. You know. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Any other changes? Okay. So if there are no further changes, then we'd be looking for a motion. Um, <clears throat> to recommend actually to the board to select the audit proposal instructions evaluation criteria with pricing with changes as noted on the record to the evaluation criteria, setting the next audit meeting for uh, April 24th. I'll make that motion. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. There being no further <coughs> items to address, it is 9.51 a.m. Is there a motion to adjourn the audit committee meeting? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? 
All those in favor, please stay nine. Aye. 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 Audit committee meeting adjourned at 9.51 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. We'll pass on that. I'm just switching over. So I am going to turn the recorder back on. The time is now 9.52 a.m. I'm going to call the meeting of the Venetian Community Development District 2 order. Today is Monday, March 13, 2023. The first item on the agenda is the call to order slash roll call. Those supervisors that are present are Rich Rocco, Ernest Booker, Ken Smaha, Joe Bazarek, and Cheryl Harmon Tarana. On behalf of district management is myself, Belinda Brandon. <coughs> district Council Regina Kardash is present with us. We do have District Engineer Rick Schapaker present. Field Manager Keith Livermore, Julie Portina from Vesta Property Services, Ginger Anzalone from Vesta Property Services, as well as, I'm sorry. Um, okay, <laughs> thank you. We are going to forego the Pledge of Allegiance as we administered the pledge during the audit committee meeting, so we're going to move forward with our agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, the next item on the agenda is the public comment portion of the agenda. As a reminder, we are going to limit public comments to three minutes per person. Our first speaker is Leonora Mangierano. Good morning. Two weeks ago, I received two letters on the same day one in regular mail and one registered mail at the cost of eight dollars plus attorney's fee regarding me signing up for three classes more than three classes per week at the november 14th 2022 cpd meeting a discussion ensued relating to a survey that was sent to residents it should be noted the results were never shared with the participants we never received any it was determined by the CDG and Fitness Committee that residents would be permitted to sign up to five classes per week per the meeting minutes. I have the meetings here if you'd like to see them. It seems there are some residents that are unable to get into classes. The River Club has a first come, first serve policy, including dining, exercise classes, etc. Barbara, um, Barbara Nigro has done a study to show how many classes are available at any given time if residents really want to get into a class. It seems the issue is that people do not sign up at 8.30 on Sunday evening, for if they did, they have no issue in joining the class. One cannot reasonably expect to get into a class if they're not complying with the registration process. I'd like to add one final thing. Communication <coughs> from the fitness committee to the residents is non-existent. The committee never asked the, res the residents that use the facilities for any input regarding cleanliness, regarding the weights in the room, regarding the class size, and nothing. They never asked for input from the residents that do use these facilities. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Barbara Negro. Yes, good morning. I'm Barbara Negro. Thank and I've lived here 18 years, splitting my time between the Venetian and Long Island. <coughs> when I'm here, I enjoy the fitness classes and never felt a reason to complain about the class sign-in process or being shut out of classes on Sunday. Now I believe there has been a complaint that the classes are all full and there is nothing available on Sunday sign-in, but it's simply not true. I decided to go back from January 1st to March 19th. And this is what I found, and this does not include the always available outdoor classes. Those are Amy's classes outside and pool. So I'm going to put this down. Sorry. <coughs> so I follow this the way we, we sign in on the computer, and it starts this Sunday, January January 1st. And I, I, we have registrants, open spaces, and total open spaces. 
So for, for example, on Sunday, registration was seven people. The open spaces were nine. And then on Monday, the next day, we had, um, we had 25 open spaces, the total that somebody could have taken. Then on Tuesday, the third, uh, we had 21. 24 spaces were open on January 4th. On January 5th, there were 10 open spaces. On January 6th, there were four. On Saturday, there's none. We have two classes that day that are very popular classes, but this goes on and on. This is what I saw, and I'm very happy to share this with you if anybody wants to see it. This goes on through January, February. When I got into March, I started to do this. I started to track the classes, and then I went in at 9.45 in the evening to see how many people were signed. So if there was such an urgency to sign for the class, the class, there were vacant classes even in body sculpting at times. That is uh, one of our most popular classes. And if there's such an urgency, there were, we have great fitness instructors. If you can't get into a class, try another class. You may be surprised that you may enjoy the experience instead of making the complaint. And also, I've been here, so I said 18 years. I believe that we used to have um, 18 spaces available in the class. Now, not every class can take that. I know TRX would be impossible, but I would like to see if we could fit that into some class that would give two extra people a chance to get into a class. And we, and this, we could talk to the instructors, see how that would work for them. And I just think we, we need to be more open. And I think we need to talk to people that are in the classes, talk to the instructors. And let's just make this work. I, I love coming here. There's a lot of camaraderie in this class. You know, people feel good. We come here for help. You know, it's a big benefit coming here. And, and this has just taken something and just made it really, really ugly instead of really discussing it. And Thank you. January, January 30th, you know, between that week, I took one class. February 6th, I took four. The next week, I took three. The next week, I took four. The next week, I took three. So I took one. Not everybody's going to take, you know, five classes or so, but. Uh, you know, people yeah. vary, but I just think exactly. that we need to open our minds. Thank you. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to stop. But thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dory Josephson. <clears throat> This is blank. No, sorry. One of the main problems that Mary Taylor, the committee member, admitted to me was that the CDD and the fitness committee are very low available. Is the computer program is not working properly. I told her that they should help spend the money on fixing the program instead of wasting money on the lawyers to send out the letters that cost nine dollars approximately a piece and several man hours and the lawyer lawyer's fee. Mary says what was. So the lawyers have retained them. So there's no lawyer fee and the letters were free. And, <laughs> Gathering and Yumi, the two uh, teachers that uh, work for Jeff, repeatedly says that the program needs to be fixed as well. The effects of the 40 program, number one. The attendee lists are not printed so that we could sign in on Monday mornings. 
So anybody could write in whether or not they are on the list or they even live here. Number two, will you please update is sent out at 6 p.m. the night before the class. If a cancellation is called in after 6 p.m., the calendar program will not update it. So the waitlist listers will not get an email notification, thus losing an opportunity to participate for that class that they try to get in. For the same reason, even though you called and canceled after 6 p.m., your name remains on the list the next day and it is counted as one of the three classes. If you decided to replace it with another class, that it has an opening that is called as your three plus class. Thus, you are penalized. Number five, when you are waitlisted, your chance of getting in is very slim. So you sign up for additional classes that you are sure that you could get in. Then you might get an email saying that you are in after 6 p.m. and system will not allow you to cancel. Thus, you are penalized again. All this time, the attendance count was wrong and the letters were wrongly sent out. We respectfully request CDD to expand your names from the rule break issue. Thank you. I yield my time to Ryan. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question of, of that? So this is the first time I've heard that the system is not working properly. Can anybody confirm that, Ambassador? Well, from Ambassador, I'd like the people who are responsible for the system. Nobody? I'm not aware. I'm not aware of it. I'm, I'm not aware the system wasn't working properly. Well, can, can, can you hold yeah, Can somebody take that please? I'm already. So yeah, I'm already okay. I think you need to increase the volume of the mics, Keith. Oh, so it, it seems to be he's going to talk. Not, he's going to talk into it. Okay. The point was my my question was: This is the first time I've heard that the system is not working properly. So I'm asking investors to look into that to make sure that it, it is working properly. I, I would like to ask the the group collectively: Have you gone to the fitness committee and discussed all these issues with them? Because it's again, it's the first time I'm hearing anything that either the system's not working or. And, and uh, can we also I'll confirm? Respond. I'll, I'll respond to that. I well, can recall. we confirm whether the limit was three classes or five classes? It's three classes. Yeah, three. It's three. It's three, three classes. I'm sure. Just, no one's speaking about the fact that you have people taking in excess of three classes a week. We have people that have taken in excess of a hundred. Classes. What? Oh, what? No. Audience members. Audience members. Trying to conduct a meeting. Yeah. One person speaks at a time. You don't be in a hundred classes a week. No, I didn't. I know, but audience members, please. We need to allow the board to speak. Supervisors, I, I caution you about going back and forth with audience comments. This is what happens. Um, if you want to hold a discussion on the item, you can add the item as an agenda item. But when you open it up for public comment, you're opening it up to everyone to comment. Right. So at this point, I would, I would suggest, I understand, but if you want to add it as a, an, an agenda item, you can for discussion. But I would not suggest that you engage in a back and forth with the audience members. Okay. There's a fitness committee meeting on Wednesday at 10 a.m. People have been invited. Okay, all of you are invited. Okay, we're not going back and forth. No, I'm not going back. Okay, we're not. Going, you have, you have spoken already. You have spoken already, and we're not going back and forth. No, supervisor. Okay, who's who's going to read it under me? Folks, the next fitness committee meeting is Wednesday, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Uh, this is an item that should be discussed with the fitness committee. Um, information, we have not gotten any information about the computer system not working. That's been expressed certainly by Ken. I can back that up. It's our understanding from looking at the rules and regulations. Three, cl three classes are um, what the limitation is. If it's something other than that, 
I'm certainly not aware of it. So I'm going to suggest the better place for this discussion is with the fitness committee firstly. And if there is no satisfaction there, it certainly can become an agenda item for this committee to deal with. But Wednesday, 10 o'clock here? Yes. Wednesday, 10 o'clock at the River Club. And uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. I would just uh, like to remind you that any rule changes do have to go through the rule change process. It is not something that in, in terms of your adopted rules yep. that can be changed by just a motion. Right. So even if the fitness committee makes a recommendation to you as the governing body, you still have to go through the resolution process to amend your adopted rules. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to move forward with audience um, comments. We ask that you please not shout out and not hold hot sidebar conversations. We are recording this meeting, and it makes it very difficult to transcribe minutes when there's so much back and forth. If you have to have a conversation, please exit the room and have it outside the room. Moving forward with our next um, speaker, Randy Buckley. Are we continuing on, or are we moving this to the next slide? My suggestion, sir, is that it be removed. That it be moved to Wednesday when the fitness committee will will hear this no, no. to iron Sorry. out these things. Um, Mr. Chairman, yeah. if they still do have the opportunity to make oh. public comment, oh, yeah. they are limited to their three minutes. Um, so I would recommend giving those who did sign up for public comment the opportunity to speak. It, it's it's up to you, sir. Yeah, it's just a quick follow up. Sure. And that's all through there. The I've not been in like the last two or 18 years, only two years, and one of the reasons I moved here was of many reasons. This is a very active community, exercising. You walk out, you look out the window, you're going to see people riding bikes, walking dogs, all in place, going to tennis classes, going to everything. I'm sure of all the challenges you have, maintain, have people wanting to maintain their health is a good challenge for everybody. The sign up process, it, it seems to be a big issue, and I'm sure we'll get into it with the fitness committee, but it is on a first come, first serve basis. And that is our society. That is a donation club. It works everywhere. It's the same for the breakfast. It's always sold out. Thursday night seafood is sold out. Pasta night is sold out. Jazz and the Star sold out. But you're rewarded for signing up in an orderly and timely manner. What you do after that, you can complain all you want, but that's the that's society. There's concert tickets, fan tickets, whatever. As I mentioned, the classes offer are very popular. You enjoy them. I don't know if you guys take them, but they're great. What we like to do. Respectfully, I guess we got to go to the, to the committee. Was respectfully uh, ask the committee to uh, amend if it is three and there's confusion over that classes back to five. I think that would help. Also, knowing that the snowbird is going to be leaving here next month and that's going to change the attendance issue anyway, that's probably going to alleviate itself to a point. Another opportunity this might be in place again, it's on my second year here. Is there an opportunity to form a subcommittee type where you have a person on this committee that meets with quarterly or semi annually? Some of these fitness committee members and get, get and receive some feedback is what, what is going on? Positive and negative, a good way to get a pulse check on the system down there, a good sounding board. That way, these problems don't come in front of you perhaps in the future. And the fitness classes here at the position are. Are a great way of providing fun, physical well being, and it's a great flag for this public lot. I mean, it's a good problem. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your comments, sir. Thank you. Our next speaker is Linda York. Good morning. I'm Linda York. I've uh, lived here for just a little bit over two years. And one of the reasons that we moved into this community was for the activity level. I have to say that I don't know that you would have this group here if the letters did not go out certified mail by a legal firm. It is the first time I've ever received a letter from a legal firm that I had to sign for, and it is for a violation of signing up for more than three classes. You used our CDD money to retain that law firm and I think it's very offensive, insulting, and humiliating. And if that was not done, and my understanding is this group voted to approve the letter going out. So this is the appropriate place to bring that up. And all these points have been going on forever that we're not represented well enough to make the changes. 
and we're here to work with groups to make the changes, but it seems like our voices aren't heard. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mary Palau. I have one uh, statement to make, and that is basically, I want to remind you that on November the 14th at the CDB meeting, Nancy made a motion to increase the class size to five, to increase the amount of classes you can take to five per week. The motion was seconded, all were in favor, and the new number became five. Then you sent out letters reprimanding people for taking more than three, which as she said, was very insulting and it's based on incorrect knowledge. And I would advise you to go back and read your own minutes and listen to your own Zoom tapes, as we all do. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Darlene Schimper. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I think it's very, yeah, I think it's very um, nice to see all these people here. And I would strongly recommend that if they have um, the opinions that they have and want to do something, serve on the committees. Or attend the meetings because these liaisons that go to the meetings, trust me, they bring things back to the board and they do discuss it. So forward for this year um, for events that we are going to be holding at the River Club. What happened with the holiday dinner dance and also with the New Year's Eve party is something that this club cannot sustain in the future. Those losses were over and above what we should have seen for an event. So my question again is, at what point, if this is what's going to happen, do you still want to move forward? I think there has to be something set up for that because I really believe that had any of you known what the losses were going to be, we would not have moved forward with the events. Thank you. Thank you, Dolly. Thank you. Our next speaker is Roger Efron. Roger? <coughs> Don't give him the mic. Oh, I told him you were going to hold on to it. I'm a little tired. I uh, took the red eye this morning from Los Angeles after being at the Academy Awards last night. I received, for on behalf of the Venetian, the best town hall meeting in the country. That was before the Rihanna production, and hopefully you saw it. So today, I'm, if you haven't been in, I'm today inviting the CDD to our town hall meeting. <clears throat> it is being held at Laurel Nakoma School on March the 20th. I think it is important, as I also said to the POA, that you're there. Uh, I think that uh, engaging with the audience is important. I think vitally important is going ahead and uh, hearing what uh, the speakers will talk about uh, during their session. I think you will, after you walk out, will be amazed at what is really happening here in terms of its growth and development and how that impacts our community and Northeast Venice. I think we have the right people talking about services, healthcare, the mayor, our county commissioner, and we are even going to have someone because it was requested and it was a good idea from the insurance industry to talk about the impact of Hurricane on, on your homeowner's insurance. We expect a big crowd again. Uh, appreciate Keith being there earlier along with the POA. Uh, director to meet with everybody and uh, would hope to see all of uh, the board there also. Thank you very much. Roger, Sunshine Laws are going to step all over this. I am representing the board at that meeting. Um, if other members want to come and sit in the audience, that would be fine. No, but um, 
Mm-hmm. So that's actually why I had taken the mic is is if there is going to be uh, participation in the meeting, uh, well, then only one of you can attend. May, may, I, I, may I say say this that the way we've worked it with the BF, all we need is Keith there to be at the table in case someone has an issue. I'm sorry, not with Keith, but with the CDD regarding anything, as with uh, Raymond for the POA. The, the, POA board will not be at the table. You won't be. We prefer you not be at the table and just keep. I didn't want to leave Keith there by himself. He and I have already <laughs> had conversations about this, and he's made up a big sign for me, which I intend to use. Sandwich so, sign. Well, you need, Mr. Broccoli, a big sign. I do. That is correct. I do. So uh, you will have representation from the board uh, there. I will be there with okay. Keith. Let me pass this out to you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I got 12 of them already. That's a question. I'll leave it. Thank you. Our next speaker is Rich Goldman. Goodman. Goodman. I'm sorry, Goodman. Terrible handwriting. <laughs> yes, hi. I'm Rich Goodman. Um, I've been here about three months. Um, so, welcome. Um, I think this is the right forum. Um, I know that a couple years ago they was talking about a dog park, and it's been <coughs> dead since then, or at least as far as I can tell, there's been no communication or no direction on that. So I'm just curious of where where that is or how to go about seeing if we can institute that back up again. Uh, the dog park was combined, just a little bit of history, the dog park was combined with um, building pickleball courts under the FBL lines. That uh, process went through the uh, planning commission and the city council, it was denied. Um, right now, uh, pickleball is going to be heard tomorrow under the at the Venice City Council, um, but the dog park issue is not a go simply because we simply do not have an area to put it. So, though it was thought to be a viable issue at one time, I don't think it is any longer. So, the FPL is about it. So, under the FPL lines, it's no longer an option? No. No, we were denied that. Well, we would deny that. We, we, but suppose suppose we resubmit it solely as a dog park. Exactly. Okay, as opposed to it's a pickle we're park. Have a it was more opposition because of a well, I perceived was, noise yeah, from the pickle ball. So. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, we, we, can't, can't, we can't do this. We keep engaging in back and forth topics with the audience members, which I understand that you want to respond, but. Okay. These are not agenda items. You're not having discussion items on it. Um, we need to let the public provide their comment and wrap up so that you can start with your regular meeting agenda because right. you do have a hefty agenda. Okay. I don't suggest that every time somebody comes up with an issue that you engage in a back and forth okay. because you, you'll really end up um, with time limits exceeding and we will end up still here at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Okay. Did you have anything else, Mr. Goodman? No, I'm just curious, you know, if that's the case, then how do you go if, if you can't talk to here and nobody talks about it, how do you find out where to go? Um, you can always send a correspondence to the district, the district board members, you, their emails are on the district website, okay. and they they respond to emails received okay. from right. the district. You can talk to any one of us outside. Yes. Okay. 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 okay, great, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The only thing, um, if, you, if emails are sent to you only, one of you can respond. It, you know, for sunshine, you can't have a conversation via email. <clears throat> Our next speaker is Steve Thomas. Excuse me. Excuse me. Good morning, supervisors. First <coughs> off, I want to applaud you. Uh, the last meeting when you decided to eliminate the reduction in the services from Ally and keep up our patrol car that's here and everything. And that will enable us to, one, monitor the irrigation violations and also to deploy the, the traffic call. Right now, David Moy is working with the, the CDD in regards to updating what was described to me as a corrupt file in regards to the RFIDs that were tagged for each one of the vehicles there so that we can employ this and try to eliminate what I believe is a tremendous problem within this community. 
it appears that in the last year, there has just been a total disregard for uh, traffic control devices within the community, uh, including golf carts and bicycles on a daily basis. I'm sure if, if Rick has been able to download any of the active radar signs uh, in the community that are still operational, uh, you would absolutely be surprised at the speeds that are recorded on those. Uh, for example, Thursday afternoon, I went to leave the community about five o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, after 30 years in law enforcement, I recognized when people are speeding, the car was coming in. I stopped and watched the, the radar sign and the speed was 62 miles an hour. Do you think that car stopped at the, uh, the intersection of Padova? No, it did not. It kept going right on through. I don't know what the answer is other than what has been suggested previously in engaging law enforcement to come in here to educate our residents. Maybe in the end of April, uh, when everybody leaves, it's gonna die down, I'm sure. But it's a matter that we will be discussing at the POA because we are the rules enforcement out there on how we can curb this total disregard for traffic control devices within the community. Uh, I had an occasion uh, Friday morning to leave my house at 4.30 in the morning to go to the airport and notice the car come through Padova and Montaluna at probably 35 miles an hour, never even slowed down to the stop sign. Of course, at 4.30 in the morning, there are only idiots out there on the road anyway, like me, but uh, it's a real problem. And I hope that we can come up with some type of a solution to curb this. I know that during the discussion over the previous years, uh, when law enforcement was mentioned in here, uh, it was incredible. The golf carts is another avenue that we need to address, being able to identify those golf carts. Uh, as I reported last time, when David deployed the stop sign indicator on the traffic hog in one afternoon, in about three hours, there were over 50 violations of over five miles an hour that went through the stop sign of Padova and uh, uh, Veneto. So, it's something we're going to be working on in the future, but I do applaud you and I really appreciate you uh, not eliminating that cost factor with the patrol here at night. Thank, Thank you, you very Steve. much. Thank you. And our final speaker is Kathy Katagen. My name is Kathy Katagen and I've lived here for two years, um, now full time. Um, I came here very specifically for fitness, and I'd first like to just reiterate the comments made by Linda York and Mary uh, Pueblo. If you don't have the specifics, I can repeat them, but I, I very much applaud those um, comments. And the reason we're here, and not to say that we won't go also to the fitness committee again, but we're here because those letters came from your law firm and from the CBD, not from the fitness committee. And um, also that you were the ones that voted to increase the classes to five. And, and that was based on a survey um, that we all filled out to increase the classes to five. Um, when you go now, after these threatening letters have come out, uh, you find that you can drop in to almost all of the classes. And I, for example, still signed up for four last week. I didn't let the letter threaten me because I frankly didn't even know about the rule all through last snowbird season. I didn't even know about it. Nobody told me about it. I was never, um, the system never measured it. Um, etc. And one last thing, speaking of budget issues, it's my understanding that adding a class would add a cost of something like $45 to pay, pay the instructing the fitness committee does not have the authority to increase their budget for the current year. You um, being above them in rank would have that authority. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there being no further public Hold comments.
why did they send out a, a certified letter? That's what I'm sure. You need about. to state your name for the oh, record, I'm please. Charles Schultz. Been here for about a year and a half. Why was a certified letter sent to my wife? What was the necessity of that? How much did it cost? That's kind of questions that I have, and I think everybody's. <laughs> Also, I, I moved here, my wife and I moved here for the same reason as everybody else. It's a beautiful place. It's a wonderful place. But instead of stopping people from doing stuff and spending money on stopping people from doing stuff, like a certified letter, why aren't we increasing the class size? Exactly. I'm sorry again. I heard something here that would surprise me. You said you lost money on those events. For New Year's, I heard that correct. We tried to get in, we couldn't get in. So instead of trying to figure out how to increase the people or, or do whatever you do, I'm, you should be looking for something that's expanding what we can do, not decreasing. And I've kind of seen that in the last couple of months. I really didn't see it the first time I was here. Probably because I didn't know, didn't know anybody and know what was going on. But now I'm starting to see if we're stopping people from doing stuff and trying to, trying to increase or make this place better. Pickleball courts, I heard that. I heard that three years ago when, when we were looking at this place. That's all I'm asking is, is can we put our focus on making this place more enjoyable, expanding our facilities, and not trying to spend money on stopping the people from doing stuff. We don't have anyone. If anyone wants to speak and you have not signed in, please approach the table to sign in. You're, it's okay. You can state your name, but if in case there's anyone else, if not, we'll you'll be our final speaker. Very quickly. Thank you. My name is Terrace Walchin uh, from uh, Montaloo, Loga. Can't pronounce it after 13 years. Uh, very quickly, uh, I would just encourage the board members when you get a chance to go and look inside the training room, not the weightlifting room and all that, but where these classes are held. I think you will see that all the right intentions, the weights, especially the smaller weights, the five pound weights, ten pound weights, and their location have really degraded very, very much. The room itself. I think everybody here wants to have a pristine location, but I, again, I'd encourage you to take a look at it yourselves and just see what it looks like. It's a great room and the concepts are great, but things go over time and these weights that these ladies have to lift, they're getting worn and used and they just need to get replaced more often. Again, I just want to make a comment about that for you guys to take a look at. Thank you. Thank you. There being no further speakers, we're going to close out public comment at this time. Does anybody need a break before we move forward? I know you had your workshop before. Sure. Okay, so we're going to take a 10 minute break at 10 30 a.m.
Okay, we are back on the record at 10.41 a.m. We're gonna move forward with staff reports. Rick, do you have anything to report? We also have the consideration of the roadway rejuvenation contract with Pavement Technology Inc. behind tab number three. And Jill, I see that you've joined us. Can you hear us okay? Jill, can you hear me? Yes, thanks. Okay, perfect. So Jill is with us via Teams. Go ahead, Rick. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, if some of you will recall, it's probably been over a year ago <coughs> now that we we reached out to vendors to look at the roads to come up with some kind of a rejuvenation. Uh, we had uh, presentations by two firms that the board chose uh, pavement technology. And then uh, we were waiting basically to see the outcome of the re results with the uh, the claim that we had against the city before moving forward with that. So now that that's all behind us, uh, reach back out to the vendor. He is holding his price at $1.13 per square. Right now, his current prices with, with, with units of Palo municipalities is up to 118. So uh, when we went through and I met with David Moy, drove through all, all of the roads, there's three roads that we feel are probably too far gone to be able to rejuvenate, that we are gonna have to do the overlay with, with those three. So this is to re rejuvenate all the rest of your roads. Uh, just comparison, I've got a bid package going out to do the overlay, and you're probably gonna come in somewhere around $12 a yard. This is $1.13 per yard, and it's supposed to extend the life by five years, and we could do this over and over and over again. So, so anyway, this this is what that come down to with the quantities based on rejuvenating all the remaining streets that are, are out there. Which ones are going to be excluded? Which three? Uh, streets? The three streets excluded are South Martelaga Drive, uh, Padova Way from Benito Boulevard to just west of Mestre, right where it would tie into phase five. And then uh, that little court, uh, um, um, uh, Savona Court, that road was beat up pretty bad. So it's all except for those, those three. The problem that I have with this, and I voiced it at the workshop, is that and you, you know you and I were out on the roads with uh, the attorney and all that kind of stuff. It's not gonna look any different than <clears throat> the roads are not going to look any different than what they are right now. And um, take Portofino, for example, which has been around, that, that road is 18 or 19 years old right now. And I'm very familiar with it because I live there. There's cracks all over the place. I realize they're more cosmetic than anything else. But to spend $190,000 and have it not look good, I have a problem with that. I can see Balanza um, and uh, Treviso because we just we just paid those, you know, and um, we, we could probably do it in, at the main entrance because those were recently done, um, and maybe the money might be well spent there. But I don't know about the other roads, and I don't know how my fellow supervisors feel about this. Just to kind of give you more background on the rejuvenation, it's a product called Reclamite, which this is a product that, that actually, it's the glue binder in your regular mix for asphalt. Over time, that glue deteriorates or breaks apart, and, and, and that's really what causes your road to fall apart. So this is putting that binder back into the roadway. 
the city of Venice started using this product. Uh, many municipalities are going with this. The city of Venice is now using this and they programmed that in. The city, the engineer, she loves it. Uh, Mantee County has started using that. Mantee County basically said, Reclamite is the only product we will use for any kind of rejuvenation because they feel that that works. But yes, if you're right, uh, they could put a pigment within it, but the pigment actually breaks it down a little bit and it's not as effective. So it will work just like what you've got now, but it's putting that binder back into the, you know, to, to help hold the aggregate and the and, and everything t together. Rick, roughly what's the difference between um, the reclamite versus uh, repaving the street? Uh, this is a dollar thirteen. Uh, you're going to be talking somewhere at least twelve dollars to okay. to over, and that's strictly just the overlay. There's a thing that I that we started utilizing, and it was great. It was called uh, micro paving. And I, when they first come out with that, that's a thinner the asphalt. They take out the largest size, the aggregates, and they substitute a polymer. And it worked great. And that was start off at $5 a square. And now that's jumped up to seven, eight, nine. And then there's some milling that still has to be done. So that's, that's the cost. So. Um, I, I'm putting a bid package together for those other three roads so so I could get hard numbers but the last job that we we, we did it was it was like nine nine dollars went from five to nine and then to do the mill and the overlay was somewhere around 12 and that's one inch if I remember correctly the reclamite um, increases the life by five years. Five years, and with this product, you, you can do it over and over and over again. There's other products out there. You could apply it once, and then the next time you come back, you're going to have to do the overlay. So to Rich's point, um, it actually preserves the roads, does not change the look, but allows us time to get a paving process, a repaving process <coughs> for the roads that need to be Changed. Correct. Now I went out with with David, and we we do our the annual review, and I show what the life expectancy remaining life expectancy is. And so yes, I got that, and I in that document I could email. Okay, so I guess from my layperson view, this gives us a placeholder basically that we've now extended the life of all of our roads, but that doesn't mean we can't repave them. Right. So if next year we look at the budget and we have room to repave X percent of road, then we look at the priorities for which, which roads need repaving, even if the reclamite's been installed. Well, true, but why would you why would you reclamate something you're going to pave in a year? Because we don't know what we're going to pave in a year is my point. I know. If you know what you're going to pave in a year, fine, but at a dollar sum a square foot, even if we approve it next year, it's probably not going to get repaved until... The year after. I mean, this just gives us a placeholder, in my opinion. I, I guess what I'm saying is, I think the reclamite is a decent idea, and it gives us time to figure out what we're going to repave over the next ten years. And when I was meeting with the city of Venice, there's roads in there that are older than ours that they use the reclamite, and it's basically they're just trying to prolong the life. There are some spots where we're going to have some patches, definitely. Uh, but overall, I met with the vendor and and we feel these are good candidates. The vendor I'm talking to is not the, the salesman. He's actually the guy that, that helped to develop the technology and he was working with an asphalt company and he was trying to come up with some way because he knows how expensive it is to overlay and then he come up with this he met with somebody else and now he's doing the work for the company but he he'll be as the open and as honest and say that i don't really want to do that one i think it's too far gone 
which is how you came up with the three that you're not doing. So All let right. me ask another question. Can you, so you did that in, in the next year, these don't make sense to do. Can you go a step further and say, after that, these are the three roads that don't make sense to do, so you shouldn't apply a five year. You, you see what I'm saying? Maybe come up with the next set of roads that are gonna need repaving that maybe shouldn't have the recommend applied. And that document that I, that, that I do every yeah. year, uh, zero to two, two to four, four to six, six to eight. It shows it by row. And I go right. on the so, top way. So I'm trying to get so to the zero point to two. eliminate all the two to fours from having the recommend applied. And I can do that too. I if we eliminate all the two to fours, don't apply the recommend knowing that we're going to repave them in two to four years. That makes sense to me. Okay. And I, I don't have that quantity with me, but I can do that. What? That, why, why wouldn't you recommend that we do that? Why would we reclamate, rejuvenate roads that aren't, don't have a five-year life? Um, my thoughts were that, that two to four may stay two to four for quite a time. Does two to four become seven to 11? It possibly could. That's the difference. That's the difference. That's why I, I, I mean, in talking to the expert, he felt these were good, the candidates, and felt that some of these we weren't. So know, basically, there will be nothing on our two to four list because we're going to repave the three streets that are excluded, and then we shouldn't have to repave now for five to seven years. Anything else? That's 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 correct. Right. right. I mean, we we we're definitely going to have some some patching i think on portofino there's a spot next to a manhole that dropped a little bit so i'm trying to see is that from a gravity pipe that caused that so that's some i'm watching so there are going to be some areas that will have to be cut out to patched um, okay. and, 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 you know that's going to happen throughout um you know with what happened with the hydraulic fluids you know there's places down on the port of Fino that were just paved and we had a massive spill and i took a screwdriver and easily penetrated almost one inch so all that binder material it's it's there but it's not binding it's it's loose so in the summer when it's really hot it's very easy to penetrate that so the, again this is the glue that it's putting back into that that is supposed to to prolong the life of that yeah so I, I know i've asked you this before and i'm not still not clear on the answer but have you talked to users of this that, that have applied it more than five years ago and they've said unequivocally we easily got five years more life uh no I have talked to people that have been using it for the last three, but not for five. And those that have, it's been down to three, say, still looks great? They're happy with it, yeah. yeah. So it's still somewhat untested. Untested in for this, five years. this, the area. Now, much more tested in the Orlando the area north, but not in the west. Coast right. here. But you haven't talked to anybody in the, the Orlando area? Uh, it's not somebody years. that had been there for five years, no. We have no significant repaving of the budget until 26. Well, my question, of course, is where, you know, where, where's the money going to come from? Well, we had earmarked it for 21 in the reserve and didn't didn't use didn't it. use it so, so there's a hundred there. there's a couple hundred thousand still theoretically there and uh that the quantity on those three rural roads uh i'm anticipating the bids are going to come in somewhere 130 140 thousand dollars just just a guess and that's for a million and uh that's for those three rows to the And then in 24, we've got like 54,000. So you'd be spending another 78. Right. 
but that was gross. What do you think? Well, if the money's allocated already, I think we should take some kind of action and approve it. Um, I'm more concerned about going forward with <coughs> discover, under, well, discovering the cause for some of the damage going on with our roads. Um, have we ever explored weight uh, limits on certain roads in this community? Have not, but I don't know how you would ever get around the garbage vehicles coming in here, recycled vehicles. They're the ones that do the most damage, especially in the cul-de-sacs. When you're turning and pushing and all that force, the cul-de-sacs get beat up way more faster than anything up. else. The straightaways typically do pretty well. Uh, but, you know, with the thing that we had a lot of, and that was the, uh, the hydraulics sp uh, spills, we had it twice a week for six months, yeah. I bet, before yeah. they actually fixed that. So there's a lot of uh, stuff that is out there that we really don't know how bad it is. But, you know, but some of these streets, when I look at, I can see they have, the exponentially de de deteriorated. Okay. Well, what the reserves planned for this, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in a way, we locked in. You should do it. That well, yeah. And, and I think also to that point, there's over the next couple of years, we're going to have a lot of expenses in the budget that we haven't had in the past because of the hurricane for money work. You know, there's going to be denials from FEMA. We're going to have landscaping. We're going to have a lot of costs over the next couple of years. I think this just gives us breathing room on repaving, remilling, and repaving roads, no. especially since it's not in the reserve budget. Well, I mean, that's the point. Room. Breathing room that we give well, us a few it, more years. By doing it, yeah, we give we push us out, even more years. Push out the, to no, no, I, I, I like the idea of it. I just wish we had more evidence of somebody that's had it down for five, six years and said, wow, this really worked and saved us a ton of money by not having to repay. I, I just, I know that there's got to be the places. City engineer Kathleen, she's done a lot of research on the product. I know the traffic, the engineer for Man 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 Manatee, he's gone to these places, talked to them. So, so, so he's done his homework also. I, and they've talked I, to some of these other correct locales. I never like to be the guinea pig for anything. I mean, I think from the, all my time I've ever done this type of stuff. When they came out with the micro paving, I had the the asphalt guy wanted to use this. He was the kind of the. the company that developed that. He wanted to use that. So he convinced me to try it out in Waterloo. And that's been probably 10, 15 years ago, probably 12 years ago. And it was a brand new thing. And I told him, I said, Mike, I said, I, I mean, I understand I'm here. I understand the concept, but yeah, I don't like to be the guinea pig. Well, Mike went as far as to say that, look, look, if that doesn't work, I will come back in and I will repave that. And that road has been hanging in there as good as anything. It's 12 years old and it's great. So that's the only other time I was the guinea pig, I guess. Um, so I, I, I like to check into it and when these oh, yeah. other people talk highly about it. So you're you you feel comfortable that the city, the, the Manatee County, did their homework, talked to these other communities that were spending there more than five years, and they're good with it. Yes. Yeah. And the literature, um, if you looked at that, you could see there was a lot of pictures. The one that comes to mind, there was a roadway. Half of it was rejuvenated in oh in two thousand and eight. And they had the pictures. The side that was rejuvenated still looked very, very good. The other side was cracked, and the alligator cracks and just falling 
uh, apart. So that that was one of the the test scripts they had done. What's the impact on the uh, community in terms of time and good question? Up? The way this product goes down, they uh, apply it, but it, it's sprayed down, and then they come right behind it and they sand it. And so you're able to drive on it right away. And then the next day they come back and they broom on the sand. So you, you're you're out of commission for the the time that they're right in front of it, your house. But then as soon as they sand it, you, you, you're you're able to drive. So it's maybe a, a couple of hours at the most. What are these situations where cars have to be? Uh... In, in garages, not in driveways, because of the spray. It's the spray that shoots straight down from probably six inches high, so it, it shouldn't. And if it's a windy day, uh, it may get on some of the brick the pavers. But uh, uh, but then what they do is for like on the striping, mm -hmm. when they they spray it, the product is clear, so it's really not going to do much, but they squeegee off the lines because they, you know, it, it maybe makes it a little slipperier. So that's when they started to squeegee off all the, the, uh, the striping and all that. So, uh, but, it, but if there is some overspray, they just squeegee it off. You won't damage horses. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I saw that there. <laughs> okay. I got I mine first. Um, <laughs> what would the allowance be for the repairs that need to take place before the reclamite is put down? Uh, we're not doing any of those roads, so zero. Okay. And then I think there was one change that Jill brought up uh, on. Oh, the notification. The notification period. And I can't remember what section it's in, and I can't find it. It was about uh, 48 Before. hours or whatever, no, right. no less than. Before I forget, supervisors, we do have um, Jill with us via Teams. We do need a motion to allow Jill to participate in both via Teams with us. I'll make that motion. Is there second. a second? <coughs> Those in favor, please stand up. All right. They're talking about a, a start in, um, if we go along with this, it's a start in April. April 17th. <coughs> April 17th. And it's 60 days to finish, I just found that. And the, and the reason I put the timing in, the, the, in there with liquidated damages, I just don't want them to just, just really drag us out. So that's why 60 days is way plenty of the time. So I, I did that in coordination with them to find out approximately when they could start. So that way we do lock them in to a 60 day period starting August 17th. But their, their time out here will probably be maybe a, a couple weeks at the most. So this will be done in the summer? Um, it could possibly be of April. As early as starting as early as April. Sorry, I thought you said August. Uh, I'm sorry, I probably did, but but April. <laughs> okay. I, I just I had a question on that. I think it's in section four. The delay penalty was like a hundred dollars a day. Correct. Which didn't seem like much for a hundred and ninety thousand dollar contract. Well, the reason uh, liquidated damages typically is you're having, you're not able to use whatever you're doing. We can still utilize the roads. I just put something in there with minimal. Yeah, cost. I guess as long as the price doesn't change. Right. If we go past, say, April and get the May rainy season. Will it affect the application? Um, the application, no, because they have to make sure it's it's dry out. So, yeah, that so it will affect. If we're in rainy season, it's raining every day. It could delay. It could delay. It could it's delay just... it, right? But but it shouldn't have a. I mean, the the the, the only thing with that is instead of 
maybe two weeks. It may take three weeks to get it to get everything done. And they have but it rains every day, but once we get this season. Well. But if they start April 17th, it should be okay. Yeah, the yeah, that's April, May. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'll make a motion that we accept the um, rejuvenation contract. Second. 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 Any further discussion? Did Jill have anything? Is she there? She's on. Jill, do you have any questions or? Um. Yeah. Just. A, just a quick question. Um. I pulled the loser study while this is on. Uh, I won't be able to pull this data. The data was first. What is the event repaid in period? What's the cost? What's the uh, cost for repaving in the reserve study? <laughs> There's only. In 26, there's 50, 2026, there's 54,000. And then in 28, there's um, a couple of hundred thousand. I'll tell you. And yeah, there's um, almost, I think it's about 270,000. In 28? In 28. And then we skip another year, and there's another 240,000. So the plan was then, every yeah, other then, year, then. starting in 24, but there wasn't much in 24. So what he's saying is, okay. we're going to have we're going to have a charge to do the streets that he's excluding, of roughly 130 thousand over what's in the reserve for 24. But if this extends five years out to 28. Then we'll more than cover that. That money plus those. Used. That money won't be used, right? Yeah, won't be necessarily used. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So it, it fits within the reserve period. Pretty okay. Nicely. Okay. Any further discussion? So we have a motion by Ken, seconded by Cheryl. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, Rick. Okay, we talked about the streets that I'm going to get the bids on, so I'll bring that back to, to you when uh, that I get them. Uh, when I was out, I also looked at your sidewalks, curbs, and all that. And if you see little the orange markings, that was me. I got the bids. The bids are due Friday. Uh, that includes grinding 17 joints, re replacement of uh, 71 linear feet of sidewalk. Some of this is along the main drive, or the, the main exit, where they were pulling out trees that they tore up quite a few of the panels, but that's what I've included. I don't know if you wanted to treat that separately, but uh, that was the damage from the hurricane, hurricane. removal, but that's, that's the sidewalks are, are busted up pretty bad. So. Uh, and now I have one sidewalk flown to add. So those bids are due Friday. So I'll bring them back Rick, to you at the next meeting. Getting back to the streets for a second. Sorry. The, the three sections of streets that need, in, in your assessment, need to be repaved. Um, what's the sense of urgency on those? Padova, let's, let, let's pick out that. There, There's a section that's pretty bad, and the section, it's not bad. Another section is pretty bad, not bad, pretty bad. I would hate to yeah, you don't like these wilt that. You know, I just want to take it all. So, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm just saying. Uh, that, can we push that back? Yes, yes. I mean, if it went into the next budget cycle. Yes. To the fall. So. Yes, we could definitely push that back. And then the last thing I had, I sent, I, I, I passed out the photos. Keith called me. There was an emergency break in the, the irrigation. We got the guy out there. I think he was out the next day. And then found out it was the, the, it was the T. So they actually had to cut all three sides of that new T, new 
few couple or so. I just wanted to show you what what was done. So, okay. but it's all back in to business now. I think it works okay. We want to tell them the cost. Uh, the, yeah, the cost of that was four thousand five seventy five, okay. and then uh, a lengthy the explanation of what they did, but. The picture kind of shows what they had done, okay. and that's all I had. Thank you. Any other questions for Rick? No, supervisors. We do have um, John Fowler here for the review of the landscaping inspection report. Okay. Um, can we move him up? Sure, okay. John, good morning. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Hello. Hey, John. How you doing? Um, <clears throat> here to present the report that I did on February 17th. Um, <clears throat> biggest thing I'm seeing going around the neighborhood, which is normal this time of year, is um, irrigation issues. Uh, I have seen some proposals that they have put in. Um, but if you look at, let's see, there's 38, 39, 44. 58, I'm just going to ramble through the numbers. I'm not expecting for you to look through all these. Uh, 62, 64, 78, 79. So they're all the same issue, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight roundabouts that look like they have major irrigation issues. So really just wanted to point that out and uh, hopefully that there's a proposal in and that those get fixed pretty soon because the grass and the plants are deteriorating because of it. Uh, we are supposed to get some rain today but um, it is notorious dry season, so we do want to make sure those are repaired for the next few months. These are all different zone areas that are on the same zone, right? Correct. I'm, I'm not even, are those battery clocks? I'm not even sure roundabouts. They are battery all battery. Yeah. So there might be some bad battery timers out there. Something as simple as yeah. replace the batteries? Uh, that or some, they have a smaller shelf life than like a clock or anything. So over time, water gets in those as well. So that, We'll have to do that inspection and okay. <clears throat> submit it, but it's something that we do need to get to pretty quick right. for this time of year. Um, one thing, number 80, I'm not sure if they just missed it or not, um, but Abilene Court, that roundabout had some pretty big weeds, and there's a picture there showing it, so I just want to put that on the radar. <coughs> sure, um, we're looking at all roundabouts every time we come through here. Um, there are still a lot of stumps on Medici Berm. As I, from the hurricane, as I drew through the community, most everything looks like it's been taken out, but just want to point out in the uh, report that there are a lot on Medici Berm still. And the only other thing at this moment is there is a dead Washingtonian palm right before you enter the community on um, <clears throat> off of Floral Road. Okay. But tip, it's just typical stuff for this time of year. Now that we're hot and dry uh, and we're not mowing every week, we're going to see some weeds pop up plus irrigation, so just okay. staying on top of it. Okay. I just would like to make one comment, uh, and don't don't read anything into it, don't take it the wrong way, but I was concerned about all of the issues with the roundabouts. Mm -hmm. And I just want to go on record as saying, I hope they're not being neglected because there's an expectation that they're going to be replaced over the next year or two. Mm -hmm. Because with everything that's going on, I myself, I can't speak for the others, uh, feel that replacing the roundabouts is a pretty low priority. And I don't see us getting to those for quite some time. So we, we need to maintain the ones that we have, other than the few that we did the first year, which were <coughs> a needed replacement. When I drove around and looked at all the others, they didn't seem that bad. In my opinion, so, they're, they're not bad. Yeah, so let's not let them deteriorate. It's just because because we're not going to get to those in the foreseeable future, in my opinion. I think that's a reasonable assumption because the, what we're going to get to is those areas that are um, that impact the greatest number of people, not just eight to ten that live around a cold set. Well, and all the you know the replacement of trees right. and, right. and all the expense we're going to go through. You're right. And what I'm seeing is there might be a plant here or there, but there's none of those roundabouts where it's just okay. awful aesthetically. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, John. Sure thing. 
John, before you go, do you want to give us an update on the um, the RFPs? Yeah, so we, uh, myself and John Toborg, uh, were here, I think it was last week. Um, we sat in the cold room back there, and uh, we did have four vendors, uh, a little disappointing, um, come in and, uh, with bids during that bid opening. Uh, the pre-bid, we had eight or nine that came, so we were hoping for a few more. But we did get four, um, and we did put all the information together with numbers in our summary, and I believe that those have all been handed out. So. Yeah, great job. It yeah, was appreciate that. It was a great job. Uh, I, I commented to John Torborg about about that. Great job. That's his baby. Yeah, it, it, it uh, was easy to see and uh, makes the rest of our process a lot easier. So awesome. well, thank I'll you. Let him know that. Thanks very much. <clears throat> Any other questions for John? No? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Regina, do you have anything to report? I don't. Thank you for having me here. Okay. So we're going to move on. Um, Jeff is not here, but Julie did distribute a copy of um, his report. Julie, if there are questions, you just want the board to submit them to Jeff directly, unless there's any questions for Julie. Well, I believe I, I had a discussion on Frecken, but um, I made a request to Jeff that he explore a computer system that restricts registration, as discussed earlier, to a certain amount, uh, specifically fitness um, registrations. I sent him an email last Thursday uh, with regards to issue and I think there's technology out there that can do it once we say the rule is the rule then the uh, <coughs> system should be able to uh, put some type of restriction on those that seek to uh, violate thanks that's all any other questions I just had a, I, I can speak to Jeff offline, but I, I was going to bring up, we've been asking for statistics for a long time about dining, other things, but certainly uh, I don't know why we can't seem to get a report that, that lays out the, the number of covers for lunch on each day, dinner on each day. Uh, the amount of the amount of revenue uh, with, with some breakdown, but just a spreadsheet that daily you know keeps tabs of it. I, I, I went back. I happened to be reminded by looking at the minutes of the social dining committee from November 9th, where in item four they were asking for that same thing. And <clears throat> I've heard before. Yes, you know we're, we're going to do this, but it's now. March, and we're still not getting any information. I, I just, I don't know if the food and beverage manager can do it, if somebody sets up a spreadsheet. Um, I'm happy to do that, just make an Excel spreadsheet that they can fill in the numbers. Um, but I, I just don't know why we can't seem to get information on anything. The number of fitness users, class users, the number of fitness center users, because you have to use your FOB to get in. Um, I don't know. I'll work with them on it. The tennis, uh, all the different applications. Are sort of well, again, if you go back to the strategic plan, you know, we've outlined areas where we, we wanted to start capturing data. And I know that there's been overriding issues, but we're getting to the point where now we're going to get into another budget cycle and we still don't have any data. Okay. Just a reminder. Any idea when Jeff's coming back? Should be back here tomorrow, right? He should be back tomorrow. Yeah, he said tomorrow. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. sure. Thank you. So I have a question. I can't remember. Does the strategic plan outline exactly what data is being searched for, or no? Just it's off the top of your head. I'm not asking. It's not exact. Data it, no, it's not. It doesn't itemize every element of data. 
but it basically identifies what we're looking for. So I can go back and look at that and work with Jeff on that. Um, and I will say, having worked with Jeff and Julie on the data for the break-even analysis, the system is not clear as a bell. Like sometimes you think you're pulling something and then you go back and you match it and it's not exactly oh, sure. the same thing. Remember when we were trying to figure yeah. out covers? Even that was difficult. So I think there are some data things that still need to be cleaned up in the system, but I'm happy to work with them. I'll pull that and look at it. But we could add on to that if you want swipes on the fitness center, right. water aerobic sign up. We've heard the fitness. Sir, sign with the fitness if you're club essentials, we should be able to get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's true. true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. can they but it doesn't get reported. It, it's not being yeah. captured. No, it's, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Keith, do you have anything to report? Um, not really, but. Uh, Upcoming, there's gonna. I've been out a few times from residents calling me that live along um, Laurel Road, um, and where we took out so many trees. And you know, there are a lot of concerns about uh, security, people just being able to walk through. They, you know, there's a there's a fence part way down, and um, now you're able to see into the community, and it's. Uh, so going forward, I'm going to be getting with whoever our new landscape uh, people are going to be and, and uh, get some things put together for um, replanting some of those areas. And one lady was really kind of, a, well, this needs to be done now. I said, well, I don't have any money now. But, you know, we're, we're talking about, it's not just this section. I mean, it's all of Laurel Road. And so um, it's a concern, but, you know, I'm trying to address it. Each time somebody calls, I go out and, and I understand their concerns. But you know, I got to get the, the numbers and things put together to redo all of that. And we'll be getting with the committee, and that's going to be another one of the committee's priority, and if not one of the top priorities, uh, getting all that put back together. The area, I guess it's west uh, on Laurel, that's Borders along the, the ninth hole of the golf club where there's so much that got cleared out. Is that CDD property or golf club property? I think it's golf. Have you had any conversation with, with Kelby or anybody? Yeah. Um, no, but I have talked to Kelby about different things. And Kelby, um, you know, about trees, removing of some trees or things. And he's like, I gotta, I'm worried about the golf course, Keith. I'm not worried about trees. And so his main priority is is the greens. So, uh, but we have had some conversations. They, um, one gentleman uh, had me over at his place last week and he could look out his from his back and see the gate house almost, where they tore all that out as yeah. you come off the nine and across the street. And he was um, adamant that, you know, well, that's gotta be replaced. We're seeing lights, you know, coming down, you know, I understand, sir. Uh, it's the golf course, um, and I'm sure Kelby had some nice words for him. I said, "Call Kelby and talk with him." But that's the people that need to replace that. It's yeah. not the CDD property to do that. Well, so, I've noticed a couple of times people have co are, are coming in and fishing in that pond. Yep. Yeah. You know, you know right along the fairway. Yep. And just somebody can get hurt. Well, again, yeah, they're not the supposed course. to be out there fishing. But, no, no, I know, but that's the golf course too. Well, any pond belongs to us, you know, and if it's, we, we, we um, either call the police or have them, you know, um, trespass. Steve, as you exit on Sitton Valley, that whole pile of rubbish on Laurel, oh, yeah. okay, that's not from here, no, no, we just, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's, um, that is not from us. I know there's one pile there that, um, I was leaving one day and there was a landscape company dumping. And he said, and I approached him, he said, you, no, 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 no. And he said, well, they, the HOA told us we could dump here. I went, no, they didn't. I said, don't dump here. And I took a picture of their truck because we had received a letter from the city to not dump, and the, not saying we did, um, but I have a picture of the company that was doing it. Now, the other part of it, I don't know if, if that came from us. I don't believe it did. Is that um, Neil's property? Oh. So it's not a city property where they cleaned up the rest of the Laurel Road? 
know how they... Oh, along, yeah. Right outside these um, FEMA. That clean, FEMA cleaned it up. Yeah. Because... And they came in here and took our snouts, too, so... Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, I don't think we have anything to do. The, that pile of debris has been there now for two yeah, months, I guess. Smart. It's been that's long, not yeah. That's yeah. not from us in any way, or That's from somebody else one of the other communities or whatever and it's dumped there it's right outside the citadel gate right uh but it's, it's not i can i can call the city and ask but i you know don't see when they're going to pick it up well it's it's what you're saying it's neil's property i believe that is neil's yeah. property correct uh, somebody who's watching it's neil's <laughs> property uh Roger, I mean, somebody needs uh, the city needs to come out and you know issue summonses or something to clean it up. I would think. Well, uh, yeah, but who do they? The who owner. Do, who, who, oh, the owner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 enforcement. Yeah, we're innocent on that. Yeah, we're no, innocent. it's it had nothing to do with us. Can you call the city first? And just see what they say about cleanup in that area. Yes, and if they say go to the owner, then we can ask legal to go to the owner. <laughs> that, <that'll be. laughs> Is it city or county? Uh, I'm going to say city. And I'm sure the city will tell you if they think it's the county. codes. If okay. it's in the county versus the city, usually you know the keeping of debris is not allowed. So I'll, I'll have a better. I'll call in this week and see what we can do. You should probably contact the same rep who contacted us about dumping. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know yeah, what? I well, think she would well, be the say. person to speak with. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. I'll do that. But but you know that wire is still down on the north side. Uh, we still got you know telephone yeah. poles that are down. I'm waiting on you know we contact uh, FPNL at least once a week. Chris is on this like a dog with a biscuit. Okay. And he's he, uh, he'll, he'll sit on hold and well we'll be out we'll be out we'll be out you know I have a work order number uh, for those light poles and so um, it's like the one guy told him well you're our last priority okay understood <laughs> anything any questions for me thank you I had I had a question I should have asked Julie. Um, just go back to that for a second. Julie, do you know, Julie, do you know, is there a gas shut off, a main shut off in the kitchen? Yes, I believe there is. Yes. So when there's a fire. Okay. Well, I know, yeah, I know that last Monday we had to evacuate the building and I know that it was because something was left on. My concern is that, um, I mean, there, there was nothing happened, but it could. Could that be? A part of uh, nightly maintenance when the you know, kitchen crew leaves, shut it off because there's no need to leave it on, right? I'd have to check on that. Typically, do, no, you, you typically do not do that because it could affect the distribution to the equipment and everything. But I don't know for sure. But I can find out. Okay. 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 All right. There could also be security issues with giving our launch access to like your main gas shut off. Yeah. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not talking about like uh, outside the building. Um, oh, okay. Just you know, is the there a shut off in the kitchen? I've uh -huh. been in the kitchen a number of times. But I don't. I never looked for it. But a, a, a burner was left on, apparently, uh -huh. not lit okay. though. Yeah. But last November we had a similar thing right. where a burner had been left on, and um, it, it caused a little bit of a of a mess in there. Um, so I'm thinking if there's a way. If the if is it necessary that the gas be left on, I'm assuming the freezers are all electric and not gas. Maybe they are. I don't know. Um, can it be shut off to ensure that we won't? We'll check. Okay. Thanks. Confirm that. I think the the real end of the night closing is to make sure all the burners are off. That's the real thing. Right oh right, but, but You're right. You have to turn off all the pilot. No, I, I was going to say you might have to relay. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah all right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Maybe they just mm -hmm. an extra reminder to shut everything off. They would go out. Yeah, yeah. In the water. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so moving forward, um, on my end, just as a reminder, supervisors, the next regular meeting is scheduled for Monday, March 27, 2023 at 9.30 a.m. Will you be holding a workshop prior to the meeting? No. No workshop? No. This is going to be the meeting where you will be reviewing the landscape RFP bids. Um, the vendors will most likely um, be present. You will be able to ask the vendors questions. Um, you don't have to do everything in this one meeting. In the past, we've had to continue the meeting depending on the amount of questions you have. Right. It's totally up to you as a board as to how you want to do it. Okay. We've done a question sheet um, that we followed where the board, the board of Supervisors would submit a list of questions to me and I would compile one list that those questions were asked of all the vendors or you can ask your questions independently at the meeting. Okay. I had indicated to the supervisors I will not be here on the 27th. You're going to miss all the fun? Really? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was thinking about doing a, sum a summary and sending it, sending it to you. But can he submit his rating sheet? He can submit his rating sheet, um, but then it's going to be locked in. You know, he can't change it. I know sometimes, um, okay. you know, when there's discussion and questions, you kind of be stuck with whatever then you submitted. But Berlinda is saying we may not finish it on the 27th. We may adjourn it. You may continue it, yes. So I would like to participate. Maybe you can adjourn the meeting to the next one in April. And not September. have the vote, not have the vote until April 6th. Yes. You can decide. I mean, you can open up the discussion. Um, it's it's your decision. If you want to continue the item to the next agenda, you can do that as well. It's a pretty hefty item and reason <clears throat> being it, it's great when everybody's present so you can hold your discussion, right. ask all of your questions. There's a lot of items to cover as it relates to the landscape RFP. And I'm pretty sure everybody saw John's spreadsheet. I mean, there's so much information on there. I'm not yes. sure that everybody's even had a chance to look at it. But it's a learning process, and you learn something new during every single process. Okay. And it's really your decision as to whether or not you want to do that in person with all of you present. You can also begin asking questions to the vendors, mm -hmm. continue the discussion with that being the only item. You can't make changes to the right. agenda. So that would be the only item that you would have at the continued meeting and the continued meeting could be april 6th the same day as the scheduled cgd meeting i think it's april 3rd or whatever whatever you can meeting. add it as a you as an agenda item um i don't think we have to re-advertise if we have it on the agenda but for continuance it would be if you wanted to meet the following week or right. the following week before your next meeting. If not, you can just, you know, at the meeting or decide now whether or not you just want to push it. We would have to notify the vendors, obviously, because they were notified that the board would be um, reviewing the proposals. You're talking about pushing the whole thing to that first? Up to you, entirely up to you. So my, my concern would be how long do we push out? Could we do the start it and just continue it? Yes. And then maybe what we really need earnest rather than your score sheet because we don't want you to be locked in is your questions That's true. if you submit your questions to belinda then we can make sure your questions get answered while the vendors are here <laughs> okay but if they're here in person and they they uh, they are interviewed by you i may have additional questions not based upon uh right I'm saying we, we'd still continue the meeting if you have okay. additional but that questions, we have all, okay. as many questions have no as possible. With that. I'll, I'll sit and come back and watch the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll watch the video. If you have additional <coughs> questions, you can probably still ask okay. them at the continued That's meeting. A, so as long okay. as this is the only item on the continued meeting agenda, you can ask Okay. All right, then let's keep it as it is for the 27th. Okay. With the intention that we're going to continue it. But are um, we going to continue it until a like a week out or are we going to go for the next cdd meeting if you're going to continue it it should be before your meeting so it should be maybe the following week rather than it's entirely up to you april 3rd keep it on a monday go to april 3rd 
Mm-hmm. Are you back on April 3rd? Yes. Okay. So maybe we should continue to April 3rd, and that way we can also tell the vendors. So if we need them to come back on April 3rd. Does that make sense? And I'll have to check with John and make sure that both Johns can be present as well. But I can confirm that at the next meeting. Okay, we can do that. Okay. okay. Jill, are you still with us? Okay. So I am going to hand out what I am going to be talking about. My favorite topic for today. Thank you. I sent um, PDFs to Jill so that she could follow along with us. I emailed them to her, but there's also um, a general ledger for hurricane expenditures. I can go over that briefly so that everybody um, has an idea of what we're talking about. Year-to-date expenses, hurricane-related, um, $103,014.98. That breaks down to gate repairs, 4,435. Signage, 10,900. We've only paid the deposit. We still have the remaining balance for signage. And LMP invoices that have been paid. So far, $86,809.98. Mailboxes, these are mailbox repairs, $870. Um, the copy you have in front of you doesn't have the summary breakdown for some reason, but I can send this to everybody in PDF so that you have it for your record. Well, the, yeah, the summary is this, another column on the second page, I think. Yeah. No? yeah, it's just, I don't know why it carried over, but that's those are your totals that I just read. Yeah. Um, so, this, so that's all that's been That's all that's paid been paid. So um, yeah. As I mentioned to the board, um, I passed out a list of invoices that I was holding because of questions as it relates to billing rates that were included as part of the invoices. The second sheet you have in front of you uh, breaks down every single invoice um, where we have a few discrepancies. I've been in communication with um, with Andy and I copied Rich on the correspondence. So based on Andy's review of the legal wording of the agreement, he believes that the supervisor rate um, should be the same as the labor rate, which is $35. LMP disagrees and they build the district at $55 an hour. Um, their totals for their um, $55 an hour rates at the top, you'll see um, the first batch of invoices, $2,960. That would be the difference in supervisor rates versus the $35 per hour. The second, um, page two, you'll see the summary of $10,280. So your supervisor um, rates, let me just add that up. $13,240. So that is your difference between the $55 and the $35 based on each of these invoices that I've outlined. Now, this is not the total of the invoices. What this is, it just represents the supervisor line item that was billed in each invoice. This is a lot of work, supervisors. I, I, I cannot tell you how much work this has been. I've had to go into every single invoice and review every single invoice, flag each invoice and separate everything. Um, the last column, well, the last item you'll see are invoices where instead of billing us the $35 an hour, this I didn't understand because the majority of their invoices have the labor, the labor rate correct. Instead of the 35, they billed us at $45 an hour. So these I did not understand whatsoever why they're incorrect. So these I'm holding because these should be corrected. Those total to $4,960. They are not in agreement with um, the assessment regarding um, their rates. Um, they sent a response um, based off of their view. I think you saw. And, uh, 
what they're claiming is that they have their hurricane related rates um, they sent those rates but we did not sign off on those rates their contract has a lot of wording specific to store which i was very surprised i mean not many districts have that that information so we've managed to have a lot of items changed and corrected a lot of the invoices that i received had zero details so they all had to be redone after they'd been submitted for payment by lmp we had to take them all out of our system what I received now that is that has been corrected, I've submitted for payment. So I'm still holding these invoices that you see here with the supervisor rate difference, plus, I'll tell you right now. So what I'm holding totals to $38,175. That's total. But what you're seeing here is just the supervisor rates and in the second page you're seeing the labor rates um in discussion with with andy i think he um he was asking if we were to take this further how much it would cost the district i think he wanted an overall number so the total difference in billing is eighteen thousand two hundred dollars so have we been paying uh a different rate for hurricane cleanup from them from their normal billing rates yes you have a storm cleanup rate as part of your contract um if you look at the rfp we also oh, sorry, the new to ones, be provide it yes so that is part of their contract some vendors try to dispute it um and say that it does not relate to you know a catastrophe or an emergency the majority of the vendors that I have dealt with with um, hurricanes, it does apply. And your contract has specific wording for storm cleanup. Okay. So the labor rate is one thing. LMP is charging a different rate for their supervisors. We do know they did have, there's no doubt that their supervisors were on site. Um, Ernest was here. He can attend. He can attest. I mean, LMP was at meetings, yeah. you know. Bill was here. There were different people here. Yes. The yes. question for the board is the difference in the rate because this is holding me back from being able to finish the amount for the damage inventory. I'll give the board an update on the FEMA process after we have this discussion, but I need to finalize our degree removal amount so that I can provide it to FEMA and then go in and upload every single invoice into the FEMA portal so that they can see it with copies of canceled checks. Does it mess you up big time if you pay the invoice and the amount you think is the right amount and withheld the difference? Does um, that mess you up with FEMA? Or? It will on, on the AP side because then we have to come back after the fact if if, for example, you make the decision to go ahead and pay them, then we have to go back. If they, if we, if we short pay them, they're going to still have a balance on on their side, and they're going to continue to send our accounting department invoices for the difference. So it it will make kind of a mess, which I want to try to avoid, given that there's so many invoices. So have they presented you something in writing that shows that they should be billing at fifty five? All they've done is respond to our email and send a copy of um, what their costs are storm related. But again, you know, according to council, you know, they can send whatever they want. The district never signed off on those charges, but you know, we have a contract in place. Right. Okay. So it's a contract, right? Something you do. Another thing that's for consideration too is that if you acquiesce to that. Um, then you're acquiescing to the higher rate and yes. you would have a performance argument under contract law. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't think we should acquiesce. I, I just mm -hmm. don't understand. We have a contract. It's got the rates in it. Right. So you either continue to withhold payment and they get nothing until it gets resolved or you pay them a withheld amount. If you pay them the, with a withhold on it, you can still then complete your FEMA reporting? I can well, if, as long as you can complete your FEMA reporting, I think what it seems to me we're saying don't pay the higher amount. Okay, so for for the purposes of reporting our total, you want me to use the correct labor amount. Okay. 
contractual. Yeah, for contractual. Well, oh. that will also um, preserve you for any prompt payment act claims as well, because you're stating this is the contract amount, this is the amount that okay. was due, and right. paying that. Okay. So you get protection out of that act as well. And and, okay. and yes, they may send you a an invoice for the difference, and not just ignore it. So at this point, I want to turn it over to Andy um, so that he can send a letter to Scott Carlson because I sent Scott a um, complete detailed email with um, information that's been provided by Andy. But given that we do have this back, I want to avoid the back and forth discrepancies. I think he provided his interpretation of what he views as contract. And he needs to provide the district stance and request that all of these invoices either be corrected or that a credit in full be issued back to the district um, for this amount. So, okay. so that we can yeah. get this ball rolling somehow because we really do need this is a lot. So we, you know, and this is sitting in your AP right now. And I've I've instructed accounting not to process anything further until I report back to them. All right. Again, to me, I think they did a great job. They were very responsive, and you should, we should pay. That's why we have a contract. We should pay what's in the contract, and I don't understand, I guess, why they're refuting that. I don't appreciate why they're okay. Just jumping ahead, in the new contracts that we're anticipating uh, with other for the review, should we have a, sec a separate uh, Request for storm damage. You have storm. There. You well, have storm cleanup costs. But what I did, um, I don't know if the board recalls. Um, we discussed additional language in there because of what we've learned with yes. some of the requirements with FEMA. Um, I sent uh, both John Tolberg and Andy my uh, recommendations on what should most likely be included as part of the contract, and Andy didn't find an issue with what I asked for. But we can circulate that to the board so that you can review it as well when we draft the agreement on whichever vendor you select. Well, it probably should have been on the RFP. Well, there is some language in the RFP regarding storm cleanup, but contract language, the contract that's included as part of the agreement is, is not finalized. Okay. okay. So I want to be sure that everybody understands and that you don't have any questions. Okay, so you're going to. You're going to pay what we should be, yes. what we should be paying, not yes. at the higher amount. And everything that Regina says makes a lot of yes. less sense. Paying at the higher amount than we're locked in, we've agreed to it at that point. Correct. So, yeah. Well, the payment should letter should indicate this is in full settlement of any claim going forth. So let's let's do that. And let's see. Okay. Let's see what happens. Now, going into the FEMA discussion, Jill, do you have any questions? Jill? Yeah, she's on the screen, but I don't know. Okay, so moving into the, um, the FEMA discussion, Unfortunately, our program delivery manager that we've been working with has been reassigned. Um, that's the bad news. The good news is I, I've really seen a completely dysfunctional team up in the Lee County, Fort Myers area. It's a little different up here, I have to say. We were assigned a new program delivery manager um, immediately, and he reached out to us. We've already met him. There's going to be a transition between program delivery managers which is good because we don't have to start from scratch. Okay. Um, on the Lee County side, I'm having to start from scratch in several locations because of the dysfunction, which you would think given the amount of damages that they would have a better team up there, but you seem to have a, a better team in the Sarasota, Manate Manatee County area. So um, we've spoken, we had a meeting last week, we talked about the damage inventory. They're aware of us um, having this conversation today regarding um, the final landscaping invoices so that I have the final amount um, that I can include as part of the damage inventory. Other than that, I mean, I've pretty much provided everything 
now I can go into the portal, upload, upload all of the invoices with check copies. I also have to work on contract summaries that they require. So I will be working on that this week to hopefully finish up and have everything submitted. Um, I think I mentioned that um, there was an extension for Sarasota County. Yeah. Um, so that is good news considering that we now have a new program delivery manager. But I will restate again that we are going to have to have discussions in the next months or so once we've paid all of these bills to talk about amending the district budget. Correct. And at that point, I would suggest that you also consider amending your River Club budget in the event that you foresee that the River Club, you know, you'll need additional funds for the River Club for the first few months of the year. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Linda, is there any reimbursement from any source for replacement trees there, and landscaping? No. They will not replace for landscaping. Um, we've had discussions about this. Um, we have another district that submitted sod replacement, for example, of all of the sod areas that died because of the storage of the debris, and they asked us to remove it from the damage inventory. Um, replacements for signage, street lights, those are items you can submit under your damage inventory. But based on what I've seen so far, landscaping replacements, they're they're pushing back can submit it, that doesn't mean that we can't. Well, but it won't be considered though. I don't, but you couldn't even submit it unless it was completed, right? Unless you have not completed, um, they'll have to set an inspector out, which I'm not sure that they'll do for landscaping. So for example, um, if the street signs are not, are not done, by the time we're done with the damage inventory, they'll have to send an inspector out to inspect the street signs. Although we've provided all of the GPS coordinates for each sign that's being worked on. So let me ask just for clarity. So if we say all the trees and shrubbery we lost on the little road provides a buffer for traffic. Mm -hmm. If we say it's going to cost X amount of dollars to replace that and we have a bid on that, would they consider it? That's a good question, actually. <laughs> What I understood from the program delivery manager was if it is considered a health and safety issue, you can submit it. It goes under a different category, but they they will have to review it and respond. I don't know that the landscaping component of it will. I mean, I do have one district where there's an issue with lakes with, you know, E. coli and, you know, even though the lakes are not, um, the irrigation components not owned by the district, the program delivery manager did tell us that because it's a health and safety issue that whatever the district incurred in cost for testing or application of treatments, we should include as part of our damage inventory. That doesn't mean you're going to pay for it, but he did say if it's a health and safety issue or concern to include it. So it's kind of, I'm not. And how long do we have to pay this? Well, we still have, um, well, the additional, well, the clock started already for the additional month. So I think, um, I think we're like April 10th. So I still have so, April, until April 10th to finalize the damage inventory. That's just your damage inventory as it relates to debris and everything else. So would this have to be, so for instance, if we said it's a safety issue and a health issue for our houses that are along Laurel Road, mm -hmm. we would need to get a bid and have that to you to be by yes. April 10th. More than one bid, actually. Three bids. Three bids. Yeah. It sounds like a good idea, but I I'm not sure whether or not the landscaping component of it, they would actually, but you can always try something for consideration. The irrigation the component of it, we already know they're going to give us pushback on the irrigation. I'm still going to submit it as part of the total, but I, <clears> I, I, I think we're going to get pushback on irrigation. Right. To your so, question about the fence, um, I still can't get a company to come out here and give me a bid. And I was also told that that fence is owned by the city. So I've got to get with my preachy today, tomorrow. And I talked with Jerry Jasper, and he says that Mike is the head guru for the fence and knows all about it. So, of what part we own, what part the city owns. So, 
So um, the other two components are the registration for the unique entity identifier. I think I spoke on this. Um, it's ridiculous. To be honest, it's, it's a computerized system and there's so much back and forth and just trying to get this entity identifier. Um, I have been back and forth with customer service. I've done everything they've asked of me. We're now just waiting for that number to be assigned to us because we need it for the funding agreement for submittal. And I've also registered the district um, on the website that we are required to as a vendor as well, myfloridaregistration.com. So that is done, but I'm still waiting on the unique entity identifier. We got a tax ID number quicker than what we're getting this unique entity identifier number. So it, it's, it's a process, but we're there. But it's the same in the other districts where you're working? Actually, we have progress more here than really? what we have in the counties that are most affected um, because their teams are, are a mess over there. You have a more organized team in this area. That's good. Mm -hmm. So we are going to have um, a meeting this week. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a different day, probably Wednesday, with the new program delivery manager. We were, um, I had Keith uh, and another district at the same time because they have similarities so that we could all work together and help each other during the process. But now, since we're separating with two different pro um, program delivery managers, we'll be separately meeting. Very involved. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know, right? <laughs> so, um, just so that everybody's up to speed with FEMA, um, that's all I had. Um, I do want to notify the board. Your board packages we've I've worked on, I reviewed for your O and M. Um, I've kept the board apprised of all of your expenditures as it relates to FEMA and hurricanes. So these are the only items that are outside of the norm. So I'll bring the packages forth for just your acceptance. Um, I am going to let everybody know that um, the new system, we are going to be launching um, licenses for the supervisors to be able to log in and have you um, privileges. We've started with Rich. Um, Rich, you should have a username and a password already. Um, it was sent on Thursday or Friday. So you should have that information. Um, once we've launched the initial set, we will come back and launch with others. We are gonna to have to issue licenses for each person that wants online access. You don't have to get online access if you don't want to, but you will have the ability if you want online access to go into the accounting system and view. Is this free conference call services? Is that No. No. No, it should be intact from stage intact. And um <coughs> I lost my turn of thought talking about board packages okay so board packages um financial statements the financial statement package i'm not sure whether or not you'll be able to see it on the accounting system because it's extracted and there's work that's done outside to add the additional pages and everything else that goes in but i'll find out about that as well um dana investments paperwork was completed we're going to have a conference call tomorrow um, to discuss funding of the account Jerry was invited to that meeting. Ken, I don't know if um, you want to attend that meeting or you're fine with just Jerry attending since Jerry's been the when contact. It? To, it's most likely going to be tomorrow, but we don't know yet if Jerry can attend. Yeah, if, if it's morning, I could dial in this afternoon. Okay. I have to check with Jerry and see if he can attend because Dana sent the communication on Friday. So if Jerry can attend, you know, that's fine. We just want to be sure. It, it came in because I was unfamiliar with it. You flagged I, it? <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay, good. But now I've moved it back in. To, because for some reason now we get, I'm getting, and I guess everybody's the same, you're getting some spam type things that are coming into uh, Apple. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I put so it back I'm going to send out, I'll send out a guide. Um, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to. Um, go through a team's call with you just to go through it. Okay. Okay. So moving forward, the can next. Can we do the motion to extend the meeting? Don't we all have it in your rules of procedure that you only go till noon and then afternoon you need the motion to extend? No, that would happen. Okay. Well, <laughs> if, if it's required, we should do it. 
It's never come up. No. Yeah, it's never come up, but if it, that's I mean, the I law. Was, well, no, that would be something that is specially adopted in your rules of procedure. Oh, Some okay. communities have that, so if you've never done that, I'm assuming it's not in your rules of procedure. I, I don't think we have a limit to the meeting. Okay. The so only time we'll do, the only time we do day. is when you have the second meeting of the month that I remind you on the on the four hour mark. That's that's why I made the yeah, comment that's about that's, that's why that's why I stopped her and said oh, it's only, almost noon because I was looking for the motion to continue. My, I'm, I'm sorry. Only my because apologies. of the financial impact. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. And that's all I had. Any questions for me? So moving forward, the next item on the agenda is item number 5B, which is the discussion regarding the River Club proposed uh, survey. Um, during the last meeting, the board was asked to provide their comments, and we added it to the agenda so that um, I guess you could discuss the, the changes that were made and whether or not this is ready for uh, distribution. I know Ginger's here. I don't know if you want to whole discussion or if you have any additional items for ginger well, we spoke about it in the uh in the workshop and there were some concerns that were voiced i think uh cheryl you've had a couple yeah of well since i've been out of pocket i didn't get to comment before so i do have a couple of comments um i guess i'll just if, if we can jump to number 12 okay. is my first question um if you look at 12 and 13, and I think Ken has a, uh, some comments about this as well, but um, first of all, I think the middle section should be neutral on 12, since it's neutral on 13, <coughs> rather than NA. And then 12 has a comment section, basically. And I think 13 should also have a comment section. And finally, I am a little concerned about fitness being asked about the associates because you won't know which fitness instructor they're talking about since there are several. And so, I mean, you can leave it on. I just don't know how you're going to figure out if they say four who they're talking about. Which number was that? I don't, I don't think that's 13. the objective is to find out an individual. Because you can, I, you, you, you can say the same thing about admin and food and beverage. So I think we're just looking for overall departmental satisfaction. Yeah, and what, that's actually what we said in number 13 was like departments. Okay, overall. So then my only concern is really, I think there should be uh, other under 13 as well as just like there is under 12. And number 12, but other you, Other what? Just like the But these are departments. These are... There's the categories of satisfaction for River Club staff. Like what other so departments? How satisfied are you with service, friendliness, knowledge? Mm -hmm. So the next one is departments. Right. Well, what other departments are? There? Well, I'm thinking it would be the same thing. If you are, if you rated one poorly, you could say, "This is my comment and why I rated it that way." Are these comments or are these other categories? It's open. It's free form. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's, uh, it's right in. Yeah. Okay, then I'm done. The, the only thing I was going to suggest to you, and I suggested it to you originally, um, I, I, I would have liked to have seen number 12 be individualized for the three departments and you eliminate question 13. Oh, okay. So, so, each so for, for <laughs> each of admin, food and beverage, and tennis, and I didn't include fitness, that would be a fourth one. Um, have that same breakout of, of customer service, friendliness, knowledge, performance, availability. So basically, you want me to add four more questions? Like, it would be four more questions? Well, you'd eliminate one, you'd be adding four. Three. But, but I'm, not, I'm not hung up about it, but particularly for this cycle, since we're already asking a lot. Uh, as I as I as I reread it, I can I, I think for this cycle we could probably live with it the way it is. So for now we've got Cheryl's two neutrals, um, not the comment box, and he does this. Is that 
right? Yeah. And the comment box to the second one to 13, and then the, the yes. Are we keeping number 12 as the NA or? No. How do we make it neutral? She's just saying change the NA to neutral okay. so there's a okay. sense, which no, makes sense. My next comment is on 23, unless somebody has something before 23. Just on 15, yes. it says uh, when we're viewing the community newsletter, yes. we, we have a number of community newsletters. Okay. I think it probably should say the River Club, River Club. newsletter. Okay. Um, Cheryl, what number 23, 23. 23 is the biggie. Yeah. <laughs> the, the wording on this is, I've read it again. Yes, we, we've had a, a, a lot, lots of different opinions on, on this one. Every, everybody had a 100% different ways. Right now. So the first one, no private events. The second one, private events, as long as you don't require closure of the facility. The third one is private events with the resident sponsorship only, right? Yeah, up to so one, one per month. Then I think it should say only with resident yeah. sponsorship. Okay. I'd put the only. Okay. I, I said only I said the River only. Club should only have private events with resident sponsorship. That's fine. As long as there's You don't need to re re repeat <laughs> profitable <laughs> events because that's a given okay. in the question. Okay. And I don't think you need the up to one weekend a month. Just as long as so I think if, if you just said, stop but I think should only have private events with resident sponsorship. I think then the second part of that sentence is actually another question. Like, okay, how do you get a, that would basically say you, sh you should have private resident sponsored events as many times as you want. Well, I think it leaves it open for discretion. For, for management discretion. Okay. Then the next one is private events any day of the week when the club is not open. I thought that was redundant. It is redundant, especially if you're going to take the second part. Okay. It's not redundant if you leave one weekend in there, but if you're going to take that out, then it's redundant. So take out the whole entire. So yeah. it is the way you would like it. No, the, 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 the fourth one, one you just eliminate. It's, really the fourth one. it's yeah. redundant. Oh, okay. Okay. Then in the last one, you actually do the one weekend per month. Do you want to take out the well, the wait a we'll see the, the last one. Here's one. So I think you can take out the profitable event. I guess I said, I, my suggestion would be the River Club should have private events up to one weekend per month or when not open for regular business. Oh. So it's not, you're not limiting it to weekends. It's any time you're not open for regular business. So is that private events or resident sponsored? Private events. Okay, so the last one should read, the River Club should have private events up to one weekend per month or when? Not open for regular when not business. Open for it, it ties into the second one. So maybe you should put it under the second one because you get it's a little confusing going between private and resident sponsored. All right, so it's so number five. Well, no, because the last one well, we took out the third. Yeah, we took out the yeah. uh, Actually, I had I, I was going to make the suggestion the third one become the second one for that same order. Yeah, either way, but basically put resident only in one section and private yeah. in another. I think if you move the third Probably one nice. as the second one. So it goes one, three, Two. five. No. Four. No. Well, what one, three, two. One, three, two. Five and four is eliminated. Five. One, three, two, five. Right. And four is eliminated. Okay. Good job. Got it. Okay. Then, yeah, um, 29. I don't think you should ask that question because that just opens a can of worms. I mean, if you're doing walk, if you're in the pool, I don't know how you, you don't sign up for it. If you fit in the pool, you get to do it. So I don't know how you would charge for that. So I don't think you should ask that question. That was, somebody asked that question. 29. That was not in their original. Idea. Charging for water aerobics? Oh, okay. I have the wrong. Okay. I, I don't think you should ask no. that question personally. It's, so, kind of, it's kind of redundant to 28. Okay. So, okay. So, yeah, anyway. The difference is the water. Right. Yeah, but. 
Yeah, some somebody somebody well, put some well, opinions. Because, somebody put that in. We're just <laughs> okay. Okay, so take number twenty-nine out completely. Yes. Okay. The board agrees. Okay. I agree. Fine. I agree. Nice. Fine. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Do you want to take out thirty-nine? Yes, and then thirty-nine, I think, should be out. The, the conversation there is. All the tennis players are going to say no, everyone else is going to say yes. I could tell you the answer to the question you're ready. I know. I'm just, I just made sure I added somebody's, all well, the questions in there. So, Oh, it's like my inquiry yeah. regarding. Uh, <laughs> That's why it's in there. You specifically <laughs> asked. Regarding <laughs> uh, a minimum. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, I. I just think we should kind of get a baseline and then maybe next survey we can ask yeah, some more pricing. Okay, stuff, but that's, I don't that's know. So number 39 out. 39 out. 39 out. Correct. Okay. November 8, 39. Agreed. And then, well, I, we talked about 36 too. Would you like to see more tennis lessons and clinics? Should that be a well, sub? That should that, that be a sub? Oh, but that should well. that be a sub of 35. Have you participated, yes or no? If you have, should there be more tennis lessons and clinics? Or do you just leave it I separate? I didn't get anything. It's too late for me. I mean, <laughs> if you have. I'm good with it. Okay. Maybe you have them, but you still want more. That's all. Let's see. So in the email that went out, there was a last minute entry from a supervisor about the minimum. Did you all want that question? No. 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 Okay. Not it's this round. Shoot the messenger. Just no, no. I didn't, <laughs> my, my, we talked about it this morning. My feeling, my feeling was, I think we're seeing significant improvement in food service. So let it, let that sink in for a while, because right now, if you try to put a minimum in, there's a lot of people who just are going from the past or bad experience. So let the good experience run for a yeah. year. Well, a supervisor of Toronto said she could tell us the answer on that other one. I can tell you what the answer would be on that. There is an, uh, um, minimum in any VESTA managed property club. We did have a trial run and it was, it's, it's something from older, uh, golf properties yes. in, in communities. Yeah. Stuff. We have a golf club. So there. You're going to, yeah. But, but I agree, uh, and I and honestly, with a community this size, if the if the food service is good here, you won't have an issue right. meeting your. Um, were there more comments? I have, yeah. uh, I have one um, on eight or in that area. I, I think we need to uh, uh, make some inquiries regarding. Uh, individuals with physical disabilities you know, uh, you know I see several they reside here yeah. and they may not participate in any of the amenities because we have not addressed their needs sufficiently so I think we should make a good faith effort to recognize that they, they are that they reside here and um, ask their opinions and stuff. Do you want do you want to leave a space for do you well, need, I, I, do you need any specialized services? Yes. Something or, like that? Or under eight. What is your age? Blah, blah. I, I think then, you're looking for to open a can of worms. Well no it's no, such no. a it's such a low percentage of the population. I don't know what you're looking to get. Okay. Well you could simply say do you or any member of your household have any physical disabilities. That's it. I'd be offended by that question. Uh, what, what are you going to do with that information? I don't know what you're trying to get at. Would be my you question. have to ask for accommodations. Yeah, for accommodations. What are you going to do with that information? Does anybody in your household require accommodations? Yes, okay, that's right. Then I think you're opening up a, a big can of worms. How so? Because now you have to address if they ask for specific We do lim on a limited basis. We do, but we're required. Are we, we required? We, where, we're, we, where we're required to do um, it, we do it. If they come forward, you don't have an obligation to reach out to them. 
reach out, but if they do come forward, you do have right. to find an obligation to provide. But we put in the door, we've got a pool. Um, lift. I, I just. And I think people I don't use the know that this section. is the place for that question at this point. Okay. I just, I'm just I'm not, not sure I, what you do with the information unless you ask three more questions. I agree that's important, Ernest. I just don't know what we would do with I, That's my concern. I don't know yeah. what we do with the, the, the I'm, I'm not dismissing. Yeah. It's like we the the name, but then what if there's a name? Yeah. Any other questions or changes for Vesta? I have a couple of questions for Vesta. Jill? The number of surveys per um, home. Uh, one per household. One per household. And Keith has gotten the list from the POA, and we were going to also discuss because there's multiple email addresses per home. Uh, we're not sure, Keith, you were going to speak to them about what they recommend as far as. I think the list goes to the primary owner. Well, that's not necessarily that's true. Not There's not some true. people get two, I wouldn't word it that way. two emails going to you know the husband and wife, and so you know, like on my constant contact, I've got you know husband and wife both have an email, right. and they're both getting the. So we were going to. No, that's that's a mailing. That's that's for informational purposes. Here you're looking for a, a response per household. I think the same thing happens. Um, well, she's trying to figure out how to, get, how to get it to that household. Yeah. And but I thought there was a, a, in, I can't, I can't remember where it is, but there's some place where we've had to pick the primary, primary. address, if you would. So we don't and have I, that. The district doesn't have it. Belinda suggested the POA might be the best source, but then he said they also have multiple. So I'll they check work. with them. They have multiple addresses. <clears throat> well, so when this is submitted, do people have to put their address on it? That's the way we don't allow more than one per. So I think you should send it personally. I think you send it to all the email addresses listed and just say each household is only allowed one response. Yeah. Um, I think it sorts by the email address. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to oh, say it's not by it's not a housing. Not can you add address on here so you can sort that way? I, I don't want to speak for the filters on survey money because I don't personally. And then which one you throw out to get to? But I know, yeah, no. But if you, yeah, I don't know how you pick one email address. It's, it would be random. It would just be random. Yeah, random. By There's people. God. <laughs> I don't think I dreamed this. There's something. Belinda, do you know of any places where? Yeah, there's yeah, not. Primary oh, yeah, it's the golf, not it's a golf, golf club. club. Oh. Thank you. I, I hear that often. I know I didn't make it up. Why am I the primary member? So anyway, I bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you from experience, going to one, um, say Rich wants pickleball and his wife doesn't. You know, she's going to say, wait a minute, yeah. wait a minute, I want to answer it differently. Right. Right. Well, the only other, the only other way to do it is, is it goes to all. every resident. Yeah. Every, every email and Then you could get 2,600 responses <laughs> instead of 13. Right. Which if your computer doesn't care. The only way you can undo <clears throat> that is if you put an address in here and then call when it you out. sort responses, call it out and but then again, which you one do you, one you, one you, one which one do you yeah. eliminate? Yeah, which one do you pick? The one with the negative comments. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or the one that wrote all the oh. extra wording, right? We will hear we've done that anyway. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll uh, figure, we'll keep left, but we'll ask. And in the absence of just the random selection, I'm not sure what else to say about that. What do you mean by random selection? It means. Whoever's typing in the email address when Keith has two to the same unit, you pick they just one. pick one. We got a clerk up in Jacksonville working in marketing that's right. gonna put them in. And you're gonna have issues where one spouse may have passed, and if you eliminate that the other email, 
Then there's yeah, basically there's no clean list. I can right. I can give it's you gonna be, I got the email, I just wouldn't tell my wife. Yeah. There's gonna be an issue either way. So right. yeah. yeah, anyway, so we can um debate that forever. Just so we'll go with random selection on yeah. the QA. Second right. question. I think you need to say that then in your intro. In well, your we intro. Can, yeah, I was gonna say we can in the communication blitz, I think. But then aren't people gonna that aren't people just gonna say, Well, why can't why can't we both fill it out? Yeah. <laughs> why can't they? Well, not together. together. It's, it's, they get their experience. There's pros and cons to both. Right. If there's four people in a house and all four have an email in the system, oh. yeah, kids won't fill it up. Probably. Especially if it takes 15 minutes. It's your your discretion. You let us know. In order to, in order to get it moving, I would say random selection is probably the most democratic way to do it sure. I think it is because most fairest didn't sound right by far. <laughs> I had to come up with another word no I just <laughs> wow so we will send out a communication to it's coming look for your survey and sure. we'll try to get that that news out there Fine. and then the link so you're going to say we're only sending one per household I'll probably say a lot Selected random. <laughs> <laughs> random. Yeah, just so we, we have a list from the POA, a random selection, one email address per home. We'll get complaints, but we'll, you know, oh, I don't have that email address anymore. Okay, well, let's see if there's we'll I'm just trying along, along the line of the inevitable complaints, um, maybe a contact person to handle that. Otherwise, it's going to come to us, it's going to come to Keith, whatever. And it's, it's not. Good idea. You know, it's it, it's not it's, it's ours, but it's not ours. I'm just trying to anticipate. I th maybe I'm wrong, but it just seems like there's going to be a lot of households that are going to say, "Why did she get it and I didn't get it? Why did he get it and I didn't get it?" That's you're going to get some of those. You're also going to get people who could give a darn and. Well, I know they just won't fill out the survey. Why. But there's, believe me, there's, there's yeah, people are enough happen. people in here who would be upset about that that you'll hear. But then, that, well, then what are you going? How are you going to respond to that? Why did you why did you send it to to that address and not Just my address? Random selection of random one email address for unit owner. Is that legal, lawyer? <laughs> It's a voluntary, yeah, I was going to say, it's a voluntary survey, well, yeah. and you, if you were doing something that had legal import, but then why not send it to the property appraiser? Why not send it to the first two email. email addresses in case they have kids? Chances are it's the parents who are going to be listed first. So why not send it, if there's, if there's more than one on a household, why not send it to the first two? And then get two responses yeah. from that household? Yeah, just, it's just... More I'm just concerned we're gonna it'll probably be self-monitoring if you sent three to a household. Well you're only gonna get one back. And in reality, well I think you'll get two back in a lot of Do you? Yeah. yeah. We'll see how many come back. I people who are active in the community. You're right. Eighty percent of them you'll only get one. Correct. But some might be two. Right. But um I'm mean, looking okay. you know we're spending a lot of time anticipating what's that the final yeah, and it's yeah. that it's clean. Maximum of two. Maximum of two, fine. All right. Okay. The links at the survey stays live. We typically do 10 days. You all get emails. You know in 10 days how far down your email chain that is buried, mm -hmm. right? You can't go weeks or months. Do you have a problem with the 10 days? No. Okay. That's fine. Typically on day seven, we send a prompter. Hey, if you missed that email, get it in, you know, and you'll have some people go back and search for it. Are you all right with that? Sure. Yes. Okay, great. Um, once we close it, um, we notify that the, the survey is now closed, and then they run the, the report, and then we put it in graphs and you know make it a little more user friendly. You know, uh, comes out kind of almost like a little PowerPoint slide. Yet. How do you want that um, disseminated or distributed back to the board? What, what Quickly. Prefer. How just send what? it to you electronically, um, all board members to receive it. Sure, yes. that's fine. Okay. And, and the results are going to go back to the community as well. Can you tell me? I'm sorry. I said the results are going to go back to the community. 
some point after we discuss it. But as long as it goes back, if it goes. Well, only because in your first output of analytics, we may come back and say, hey, we think you need to. Can, can you look at this or can you okay. kind of take a cut this way? Let's talk about the word analytics because we're not a professional market research firm. We're a management company. We do this for a lot of communities, but it goes into Survey Monkey and they print out the report. So it's pretty much what you see is what you're going to get. You know, now I, I'm assuming you're talking about at the board level saying, these are the n numbers we've gotten, Ginger. Don't you think you ought to pursue, you know, ABC or whatever? That type of analytics, is that what you're talking about? What you evaluate off of there may be there, there may be ways to cut the data differently. And I'll I'll use the example or asking people what months they hear. Mm -hmm. There may be I don't know, I'll make this up, it'll probably sound stupid. <clears throat> there may be information we want to get from people who are here twelve months versus people who are here four months. Or we may want answers to questions that exclude people who are only here for four months. For example, to me, that's part of analytics. Right. Um, there may be extra charges of survey monkey to do that. Well, there's already extra charges because of the, the scope of, of your community, which is, is fine. It's not a lot of money. But as far as, let's say, the people that are snowbirds, how often do you all actually use the food and beverage? Program? Well, that's why we said when you're in residence, right. how often do you do this? Because we were trying to right, right. cut some of that. But I guess what I'm asking is, are you asking if the software <coughs> can do those after you have your discussion and say, we'd like to drill down a little bit? If that's the question, I can find out yeah. from, from our marketing director. Again, I don't use the software. I'm not that savvy with it, but um, I'll ask him what what they do. Okay. Okay. And then if not, then a sub subsequent survey may drill down with those kind of questions. You don't want to survey the community to death or anything. No. Um, there's a lot of questions here. This is a lot of information. And if I may, on the open-ended, um, one supervisor wanted a, a bunch of them and with, what you say, 2,600 now email addresses? What we have done in the past, and you all can decide if you want to do it here, is especially in communities where you have a high number of retired people, they have a lot of time to give you a lot of information. Um, sometimes the boxes have certain character limits if you can't walk right or in peace yeah. in the box. Thank God. Uh, but people do try, and it becomes a massive volume to crunch. So what we do is have um, the, again, the, the person who's going to be typing this in, go through and pick the main topics and kind of try to categorize them that okay. it's not food and beverage. It's still a lot of information, and a lot of times there's multiple topics that are kind of, you know, oh, yeah. spun out. Um, and it's it's a real it's a it's a real task for somebody. I don't know if you have a committee design. <laughs> I don't know uh, how you want to. Well, we may. Data, I mean, we may want the feedback to go back to committees here if it's specific to their areas. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's see. We don't we know get. until we see it. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what we get. Yeah. But yes, you'll have Thank volumes you. of comments. We're all squared away on the survey. And then date for distribution. Any concerns to the board this week? No, that this get, will go trying out. getting it out because we're ready oh. to go with these couple of things. So the ASA so the better. Yeah. yeah. We were targeting mid to late week, so we'll get these adjustments made. That would be fine. And then for can't wait. communication notice out first and then yeah, that. Okay. Thank you. Hold on to your hats. Thank you very much. Thank you. Blow the computer. So we are at our three hour mark, everybody. Yep. The next item on the agenda is item number 5C, which is a discussion regarding the pool fence proposal. I'm not sure if the board discussed this during the workshop. Oh, we did. We discussed yeah. it during the workshop. Um, uh, there were a couple of questions that were raised. They were all answered satisfactorily, I think. Yes. 
<clears throat> so, would, are we prepared to move forward on this? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Okay. That we engage the services of the United Alliance Universal Access, Universal Access to uh, do the pool repairs and and new fence, new fences for the price set for. Yeah, the total is twenty two something. Where is this going to be paid from? Yeah, we, we, um, oh, it's attached to this going to be paid from? Yeah. Olivia wants to know where it's going to be paid from. Reserves? Yes, it would have to be uh, totaling twenty two two seventeen thirty seven. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please state aye. Uh, aye. 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 <clears throat> um, we do have item number 5D, which I think we've pretty much covered. Yes. But just as a reminder, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to send an email. Um, John will respond um, to whatever inquiry you have regarding his worksheet, or if you have a question in general about the process. Um, I know it's new to some, but you know it, it's, a, it's a difficult process to go through, but it's a learning experience for everybody. So if you have any questions, please let us know. So moving on, we do have item number 5B, which is the consideration of the audit committee recommendations. The committee has recommended for the board to utilize the evaluation criteria with pricing, with changes made um, for points in the criteria. Any questions? There are no questions. We'd be looking for a motion to approve the evaluation criteria with changes as noted on the record for use of for the RFP packet for auditing services. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? I have just one thing, Belinda. There are two proposals in the packet, one under tab one and one under tab two tab two was to be disregarded right mm -hmm. yeah. just wanted to make sure because it came out again and revised with both of them okay yeah. so once um we go back we make the changes we'll use the evaluation criteria with pricing right. with the changes to the points as you discussed any further discussion just out of curiosity why was the second one even there some districts choose it which is surprising but really? some do Any other questions? Okay, can we call it? All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Thank you. We now have consent items for your acceptance. These are under tab number five. We have the Reserve Advisory Committee meeting minutes of January 16th, social and dining, committee meeting minutes of November 9th, December 14th, and January 11th, 2023. And will we accept all? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please state aye. Aye. Thank you. Supervisor requests or comments. Are there any supervisor requests or comments? Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, has the POA, I know I did it by email, but did, did they pay for the um, construction? I haven't seen anything yet, but um, I can ask Vanessa. Actually, yeah, I can ask her if anything came in. Um, okay. They were and built. They were. They were built. Yeah, and um, there was um, some twenty-seven hundred dollars of change uh, in credit cards that were coming back to us from Vesta. Do you know if we got that? No, I don't. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I, I can't be on that call tomorrow with Dave Fanta. We're probably going to reschedule because he just sent a communication I for see. 11 o'clock. Okay. Vanessa has a, a set call and we need her on that call. So when, whenever that call takes place, if it's a day other than tomorrow, I might be okay. able to be there. But otherwise, the Fidelity accounts that we have, the 400000 I just want to ensure that that is part of the money that uh, it is. It is. All right. So I'll try to reschedule for Wednesday morning. I think I think it's best that we all are on the call. Yep. Wednesday in the morning would be fine. Nine o'clock, nine thirty, ten o'clock would be fine. 
and that's all I have. Any other supervisor requests or comments? Uh, I have. Um, I have some. First, uh, I would request uh, support from my fellow supervisors that we uh, indicate in future RFPs and contracts that the contracts include affirmative action requirements uh, as set forth under the Florida statutes for minorities, women, disability, people with disabilities, and veterans. I would like uh, that's a motion. Oh, yes, that's I'll put it in the form of a motion. I second it. Any further discussion? Is that pretty standard in all contracts? Most government contracts you see some statement um, regarding those items, yes. Okay. Go ahead, question. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, and then with regards to fitness and pull, it's my understanding, and I believe my fellow supervisors' understanding, that there's a three class weekly limit. When much was said about there's a five class we five classes weekly limit. I believe that the last meeting we discussed this and we emphatically said it was a three classes per week limit. So I wanted to make that clear. Uh, is there any um, disagreement with that? I have no disagreement with that, but there's a, a misunderstanding. The the person, a couple of people said, Nancy, Nancy, Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody see a name Nancy. No. However, are they talking about from the pool and fitness committee? I um I asked Carrie um at, when we restarted to uh, go back. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this takes time. Right. She has no idea where it because. She kept, showing, she kept showing me minutes, 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 but I, they don't look like our minutes. That's yeah. why I asked her to submit her question. I think right. I know what it was, only because, sorry, I was out in the hall trying to use the facilities. But there, but I, it's, a, it's a committee meeting. That um, is exactly, that's exactly yeah. right. And so here's what I think happened. The committee meeting minutes got approved in the CBD meeting. They believe that because yes. they voted and the CBD approved the minutes okay. that we approved five. Correct. Right. Which I, you don't. You just right. accept the minutes. But I think nobody don't That's, think anybody understands that. So well, so it looks like what was what what we were being shown and you know in the back and forth are committee meeting minutes. Those are not on the exactly. CBD minutes and Carrie double checked the rule and it does say three. Right. So uh, I don't know where the confusion comes from, but now that we're in the discussion, supervisors, you know, the decorum of the meeting, I know it's difficult right. to follow because you want to respond to your constituents and you want to provide responses. But as you could see today, when you have a major topic on the agenda, it can become a problem when you engage in back and forth conversations. We, I've, I've attended meetings, I'm sure Regina has attended meetings, where we've even had to have police presence because people just, you know, they approach the front, they, you know, they get upset, that's not what happened here, but it's a hot there topic. afterwards. That afterwards. Came, and yeah. it was very rude. You hear what she said? Yeah, I told her that you need to back off now. Yeah. One she president. was right. very rude to him. Yeah. Very rude and it very is. abrasive. And it was, and like, I'm sitting like right here and she's like pointing at him like over me and I'm like, Need to go. Yeah. So you know. But but again, I'm used. To, I, was, I sat in the criminal court, so I could deal with some of that. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's that doesn't. But that doesn't make it appropriate. It's no, not that's that's never acceptable. That's it's not. Okay. So yeah. in cases like this, um, you have your emails are public record. The emails are posted to the website. If there are specific questions about an item, they should be submitted to the CDD. And as a board, if you want to discuss the item at a meeting, it can be added at the meeting. We have to open it up for public comment if you add it during the meeting, or we can add it to the next meeting agenda. It's it all, it's, it's your decision as a board. But when this happens, you know, it, it really, and you already have a sense that there's some sort of an aggression where people are upset. Engaging in back and forth is not really going to provide a solution. 
And you know, in the future for future meetings, I think you should consider that when you respond to audience comments as they come in, because you really want to avoid the, the back and forth where you have an entire audience that wants to speak. Once you open it up to one person, you have to open it up to everyone else and then it becomes an issue. Well, why did she get to speak again when I didn't get to speak again? So, so is it safe to say that during public comment, nobody but Rich should really say anything on the Board of Supervisors and that Rich just says thank you? I mean, well, yes. I'm trying to, I should just that's not what I'm say gonna, anything. Yeah. That, well, that's what I'm gonna yeah. do from now on. What I, what I have tried to do in the past over the last number of years is like give, give a quick answer, you know, to, to what it is. So, but I'm going to back away from that. I'm simply going to say thank you. Yes, and a perfect example today. A document was being pushed in our faces about um, meeting minutes. Meaning, well, you should be able to answer because you were. I don't remember what happened in November. Right. I can tell you that. So I, we have to do some research. This is why they should submit their inquiries to the district so that right. we can go back, do our due diligence, and respond if that's really a question that we need to respond to or a records request. But we want to avoid that because you're being put on the spot, ask questions that I'm not sure about anybody here, but I can't answer what we decided in November. I'll be very careful about that in the future. And I added to it and I shouldn't have, I should go back. It, you know, we do have, um, we've seen it. It really opens the door for an unproductive board meeting. It takes yep. a lot of time. I don't think the residents understand that this is your only chance as a board to conduct your business and hold discussions. So I cannot express it enough. You know, please try to avoid the back and forth conversations because if you open it up to one person, you're going to have to open it up to everyone else. Okay. You also have the ability to suspend the meeting when the crowd gets out. Oh, I would do that in a heartbeat. Okay. And um, no. I'm aware of that. <laughs> Now the rule process in violation of the rule process prompted the letter. And that's the only uh, avenue we have for purposes of due process. Uh, am I correct? correct? Correct. So they're upset about that. Now, finally, we can anticipate that there will be continued violations of the rule. And we may have to deal with this at a later date. I, 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 was, I was told that. Yeah, she, there's I, she, a couple of things that you need to consider with respect to the rule that was put in place and the way that your fitness schedule was structured, right? The three rules per resident was based, you know, that's based on what you can afford to provide them, right? And if they're taking more than those three classes, then they're supposed to pay for them under your rules. That's part of the issue. So then if they're taking more classes and they're not paying for them, that actually constitutes a theft from the district. What are they doing here? <laughs> she said it, not me. <laughs> are we even billing for them? Well, that's part of what they're oh, supposed to do. I, I so the letters that they received, oh. the letters that they received says that, that if they, they continue to use the three additional classes, um, that their privileges are going to be suspended for 30 days. That's the letter that was sent to them. That's what they received, because that's what's provided for in your rules. If they want to take more than the three classes that each resident is allocated, then they are supposed to be paying for those. So you can seek that they go and pay for them. If you want to increase the number of classes, then you have to account for that in your budget and what they're paying for in their assessments. There should be an analysis of, of how what they're paying, what you're paying for these classes to put them on for them, uh, how it correlates to what you're charging them and how much each resident gets. Well, that we, don't, we don't charge. It's part of your assessment because it's your budget. That's part of well, your budget. What I'm saying is we don't, we don't bill people we for going even over know how to three build classes. Them. You don't have anything set up to bill? No. 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 As a whole, the whole point then, of the three classes that's right. was because enough Diversity of residents okay. couldn't get in. The same people uh -huh. were, were booking six to eight classes a week, and other people couldn't get in. Right. That's why we set the three limits. So it wasn't There's based no fee on your involved. budget. Yeah. Sorry. It wasn't based on your budget and the cost of providing the classes. No. Not at all. No. Yeah. no. Yeah. It was. It was because so we got so many complaints by people saying. I get on at 8.32 when they're all filled up because people signed up for nine classes. So we're saying now you can only sign up for three. So other people can get in. 
which is why they presented all the information about, but we looked at these dates and classes weren't even fully attended. And, and if a class, what they didn't say is if a class is not full, you can walk in as you can go in as a walk on as long as it walk in as long as there's room and you don't get you don't get charged the fourth class right so this is just a reservation so it's only three reservations then because they yes. can walk in right. and they only get three reservations the class isn't filled they can walk in but instead of doing class. three reservations and walking in they do not have reservations that that's well, the problem they do not have reservations instead of but, only doing three and well, walking well, in well, the people that got these letters far exceeded the three class minimum. Some to the reservations. Right. They would go yeah. online and reserve. Okay. They used super four, five, nine classes. Because right. our system couldn't lock them out after three. And, and that's something that should be invested. I think they're going to look into it. But, but again, it's the conduct. Okay, people are, talk, are complaining about the rules and not the underlying substance. Okay, it's the conduct that they're doing that is excluding others. And they are maintaining they will continue. So, uh, well, we will have to deal with it. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, what, what about the, the idea in outside of season? And how do you how do you differentiate that when the classes aren't full? They can just walk in them still, right? Once again, I'll make that suggestion at the fitness committee meeting. So I think you should expect a lot of participation at this coming committee meeting. Um, oh yeah, I hope I the hope same, there is. The same <laughs> the same applies as it relates to you know um, anybody screaming, yelling, or disrupting the meeting. So let's well, that, that. that's only one person that does that. Okay. We will need your security. <laughs> quick, quick procedural question. So, being a fairly new board member, um, so when I'm reading the minutes that come through that we approve at the end, if in the future I see something that I know, even though they motioned and approved it, it is not really approved, we should maybe make that. I should make that note. You can't change it. You, you, you can't change the minutes, but you can right. not right. accept them and we can send them back. That's so what I'm saying. Should we? So technically, we should have probably not accepted those because it made a motion and approved a motion that isn't really appropriate. So no, you are not approving their motions when you approve the minutes. No, All you are accepted. approving is the record of what occurred at their meeting right. and accepting that. So but you're not we, approving their individuals. Yeah. You have to have, if you see something on their agenda mm -hmm. that is under your purview that you want to approve, then it has to be a separate item for you all to discuss and approve. Um, just approving their minutes does not approve what they did. So that's something that Ernest in your meeting this week probably needs to be crystal clear for them because I didn't actually understand that either. That just because their minutes came to the CBD does not mean we approve the actions. <coughs> actually, what we do is accept. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that helps right. me. Thank you. It's right. a narrative yeah. of what happened. We accept that. Right. Nobody's okay. agreed. Got it. Okay. Well, the problem not doesn't lie with my committee members; it lies with those who misinterpret. <laughs> but since those people might be there, <laughs> oh, I expect them to be. I invited them. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's one other thing I forgot to say, and uh, tomorrow is the uh, city council meeting um, with uh, with respect to pickleball, and um, I will be there, and um, I will report back. To my fellow board members, the result of that. We'll see. I think you can attend online. You can oh, yeah, it's online. online. Sure. Mm -hmm. But um, Mark Hansen um, and uh, his associate, Kimlin Walker, will be there. Uh, Rick will be there. Uh, I will be there. There'll they'll be a good number of folks on both, both sides. This is a um, this was brought about because of an appeal from a resident. Uh, please understand that we have approval by city staff as well as the planning commission to proceed with this initiative. Um, a resident had put in an appeal and then a great deal of time has passed as that uh, appeal process uh, took place and then another appeal was put into Swift Mud 
saying that uh, our, our permit was issued uh, incorrectly. That was another trial that took place. So um, hopefully tomorrow we'll, we'll have a decision one way or another on this. But I will uh, report to you, report back to you after the meeting. Okay. Any other supervisor requests or comments? Okay, it is 1251. There's a motion to adjourn by second. All those in favor, please state aye.